Hello everybody, this is Ebontis here, and I want to give you guys a small disclaimer before this episode starts. Uh, Lord Cognito was out in PAX, and the audio I got from him is not of the highest quality that we usually like to have, so I do apologize. Um, there will be a couple echoes of me probably coming through on his a little bit, and his is definitely not as clear quality. He was using like a headset instead of actually a good mic because he was traveling, so it was a really good podcast, so I apologize about the audio not being prime on this one. Um, you guys know I've actually been trying to work on that for everybody, so it is a great listen we get into kind of a crazy heated debate chat was amazing when we were doing this one so if you guys listen to this one live on twitch you guys are awesome you guys can catch these live on twitch.tv slash but it was a really fun episode so enjoy the listen find some way if you want to hit us up on twitter youtube comments things like that let us know what you guys think because this debate is going over a couple episodes now over this whole uh, weapon retiring thing so enjoy the episode and uh, i'll talk to you guys later all right, and we are live. A last minute edition of The Last Word with Lord Cognito and Ibantis. Super, super spicy and super hot campfire. The people wanted it. I wanted it. Even from PAX, I wanted it. <laughs> so, excuse my audio levels. They are not the greatest, but I could not miss the show for the world, especially after last word, the last, last word. So, E. First of all, how are you doing? How's your victory lap right now? <laughs> uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm mm -mm, not sure what you're talking about, sir. Uh, I'll just mm -hmm. say the timing of everything that has happened Yo. has been insanity. I mean, for it's, one, you're at PAX. I mean, like, you like... Uh, all right, so I just want to break this down for everybody. Last week, this man called me out for not teasing, like, texting him for this little, like, Two second, like 10 second login, 45 second teaser with his man, Osiris. All right. Woo! So, the guard, the guard. Make sure you say it right. The guard. Oh, and God. then it's like, <laughs> it's Tuesday night, right? Yes. Yeah. Tuesday night. So, Tuesday, the reset. Everybody's getting all their fractal line. We're getting close. You're seeing the numbers climb. I'm like, all right, we're getting close. Now, we had previously seen from, I want to say, Dylan, um, DMG04, that, hey, there's no. Don't expect it. Don't expect a quest or anything of that nature. They kept the expectations fairly low. So this man was sleeping about 9.30, I want to say, 9.30-ish, mm -hmm. is when mm -hmm. the fractal line finished. Okay. When the fractal line finished, the beacon in the tower got a little change. You had to kind of had to log in and log back out. Right. And from there, when you came back to the Tower Obelisk, there'd be a little thing, and it popped up a little, like, mini quest thing and said, Worthy. So you went and you basically lit the beacon in a baby cinematic. It's kind of cool looking. Mm, Your okay. character would go in the middle. You took the Lantern of Osiris, plopped in the middle of this thing on Mercury, and this beam of light shot up in the air because, you know, we're calling out to all the Guardians out there in the universe trying to call all the new ones and such. Um, so after that, you went back to the Tower, and you're like, cool. That was it. Pretty simple and sweet. Then, save your title. Then for those where, yeah, save your title. So if you guys are waiting on those, it's done. So you lit the beacon, my finished out. first title, one. brother. My first one. That's your first title? I literally have so many unfinished titles that oh. I've never bothered to get them. Wow. <laughs> well, congratulations on your first one. Way to go. It's like my sixth. So. No doubt. Salute. Um, so then, for those of us following like Bungie's Twitter, because we're waiting for the picture for them to say complete. When that happened... When it's a complete, that's for one when we know we could go actually talk, interact with the obelisk. They also had just a little YouTube link on the bottom of the tweet saying, hey, you guys completed it, YouTube link. You clicked on that, and it would send you over to a YouTube that was going to premiere in about 25 minutes from when I clicked on it. And it was the, Ooh, and it literally said, Trials of Osiris, Season of Worthy, Ooh. Developer Insights. And this is the point when I see this, I start texting this man. I actually picked the phone and called him, and I got nothing. I got a dead, <laughs> silent zero. But it's the thought. <laughs> but I will definitely say, I even made a whole video and sent him the damn link that he had before he woke up. So by the time he woke up, two texts, a phone call, and a video all about all the stuff that happened. But man, My man. Trials is going to be coming. I got us here. How are you feeling from when all this went down? Woo! Yo, let me tell you, man. All right, first off, salute to my man E 
for making things right. Like this man, not only did he make it right, he went above and beyond the call of duty. He said the ninja needs to know. I don't care how he's sleeping. I don't care what's going on. If I could have sent a courier call. over to your house and knocked on your door, <laughs> I would have done it. Bro, mad love. Like, to, to get the message, again, normally normally I would be up during that time. Oh, and that's, why I, was, I that's why I was calling you so much. I was like, why are you yeah. asleep? You're why always am I not awake. Because I switch. You know, normally I'm a vampire, so I, I, I'm awake during that night. But I always have to switch my schedule because I'm going to pack. So I got to be a day walker for you guys. So I got to be a day walker. I had an early train. So I did the responsible thing. I'm like, okay, I figured Fractal Line is going to be finished. But they're not going to announce Fractal now. Like, I, did, I didn't even think. That was the last thing for my mind, to be honest. I, I, probably, didn't, I didn't either. They had the expectations had so low. So low. So I'm like, okay, they'll probably do some little cinematic. Maybe I'll find out. So I said, I'm going to bed early. I'm going to be a responsible human. <laughs> I go to bed. I wake up to the voice message the text. Everybody's hitting me. But my man E was the first. So I checked it out. And then, yo, let me tell you right now, man. It was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay, I'll tell you that a little bit. But um, it, it was absolutely insane. I saw the trailer, and let me tell you, if a grown man was almost ready to tear up, when I saw that Egyptian armor, when I saw that armor, when I literally saw my favorite warlock armor of all time, and then you see in the classic maps, and then they did the bed up. And Luke Smith talking about threes and how much it meant to him. And literally, it was my life flashing upon the screen. <laughs> like, let me explain something to you guys. The reason why I go crazy, right? I'm not the greatest teacher. But the reason why I go crazy is the way, shout out to my man gaming at it, the way you guys go crazy for raids, the way he goes crazy, like, raids are crazy. Pete Krause is my raid for PvP. I've only been in a lighthouse two times. But it's the greatest moments in Death. You remember, I remember Destiny 2. And remember when they did those, um, remember what you did, like almost like passes of time in Destiny 1? Yeah. So those callbacks, I remember people at my fire team. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to a, a couple of people that you know, I've played by a long time that I'm like, wow, I remember when we went to the White House. Like, those are the things you remember. So to see it, to see the Egyptian team, to see. Oh, say trials of Osiris. No trials of the nine. And Saint's voice. It was literally storybook for me. I went insane. Christmas came in February. Jumped on the train. Biggest Kool-Aid smile you've ever seen in my life. It, it was heaven, man. It was heaven. So shout out to you, E. That was amazing, man. What a show. Now, let me ask you for a person who... I don't say you don't hate. I don't think you hate trials, but I know you were skeptical of stuff. Like, what was your feeling when you saw the trip? Um, first time, just the fact that I was waiting twenty four minutes. I was like, all right, Hamill, how long are we getting? Ended up being about four minutes. I was like, that's ah, a little tease. It was a nugget mm -hmm. at ten o'clock at night. Honestly, that was the funny mm -hmm. part. Yeah, if you can turn me down, that'd be good. Um, I'm keep, I'm keep turning uh, you down. You go. So it was cool. Just the fact that it was like timed now granted it was a youtube premiere and i know how those work so there's somebody sitting at home waiting to be like all right sweaty okay set that move bump it out like 30 minutes so they just had the time like two or three days from now like unlisted and then they're like okay uh set their premiere for 10 o'clock for my time it right. was eight o'clock uh their right. time i think so it was cool to see i like the logo as you're sitting there waiting for it the logo on that oh, video was pretty cool the eye i'm buying all the merch all the merch is bought for. I'm telling you right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. This man is going to buy everything from that Bungie store next season. Every gold Every, eye. Everything he can buy. <laughs> uh, so then uh, we got the premiere. And mm -hmm. just Luke Smith talking, like, if I could ever get a chance to interview that guy, yeah, I'd be I'd be good <laughs> just to ask mm -hmm. to interview Luke. Um, oh, yeah. Just, Luke's he's amazing. So, he's so genuine. And for somebody at his level – to be to be able to be so candid and kind of yes. just like That's real guaranteed. but he still he still knows how to play the proper like corporate transparency yeah. but he does it in such a candid nature just like dude I'm just having yeah. a conversation with this guy mm -hmm. so just those little bits like talking about trials we knew it in the title that it was coming and then they started getting into it they were like okay you got the OG maps coming back I was like 
I have way too many memories on all three of those. Ooh. So you got Exodus Blue. That one definitely. I think that was a later edition. It was an OG map, was it? No, that yeah, was, that was that a later was a edition. A later edition. You had Cauldron, which I was like, makes sense. They're gonna do. They're gonna give makes it basically sense. a Shadow I Keep see. paint job. Yes, yeah, uh, Shadow Keep. And then Anomaly is one I've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. uh, the Anomaly map, the like, just it's a very, it's a circular map, but we don't really have yes. as many of that shape. Which is mm -hmm. very cool to see. It fits more with threes, the smaller tight quarters. Like, I want yeah. Rumble on that map. I miss Rumble on that yeah. map. That one is so much fun. So, and they all have good different themes to them. Um, so the maps are cool. Now, mm -hmm. there has been a giant controversy about one of the things that was said in that video. And yes. as of like, what, two or three hours Actually, ago? Actually, two controversies. The two controversies. One said we mentioned, and then one, the big one that we there is, I wouldn't say it's a controversy, but there is a small contingent of people. I'm going to attack Seth Fred right now. Shout out to Seth Fred. You know, you know I got mad love. I call you CT. But anyway. <laughs> so here's the deal, Seth. I get what you're saying. Now, the people who say, look, I'm not trying to hate on y'all, but yo, that's just blue skin of the old. It's literally the old suit. It's the same old map. I get it. I get where you're coming from. I cannot deny that categorically to the letter of the law. Yes, but you gotta understand what's happening. This is a callback. This is an emotional callback to the prime era of crowd. They are going to give us new armor. <laughs> They're going to give us new maps. But those are the most beloved sets and maps for trial. That that was peak trial. So don't get it twisted. We're gonna get the other suits, newer suits. But this, I'm telling you, that was a nostalgic thing. Look at it like that. Don't look at it as like, okay. See, I think, we, see, I don't, I mean, the, nostal I mean, the nostalgia is there to some point because there's a lot of people yeah. that have been asking for it in itself. But honestly, mm -hmm. in my mind, I see it more safe than nostalgic. Absolutely. I was but like, because you have a 3v3 mode based around this. And when it comes to maps that they know work, mm -hmm. they have a couple yeah. that they brought forward. But they wanted to have a couple that they know have been used for this mode before. So yeah. I honest, I will say, like, I enjoy the maps. And, like, for them yeah. to be able to bring multiple maps in in a season when we typically don't get strikes or crucible maps or anything, if this right. is the way they bring them in, yes, it's safe. I would like to have seen, mm -hmm. like, three and maybe one new one that they may have had some okay. time to design. Just a little mm -hmm. freshness. I'm not sure how right. close. I wanted to ask you on the armor as well. Because the yeah. armor itself... There's one picture. I took a bunch of screenshots from that video. Mm -hmm. There's one picture that is, um, it's like the three, I think the warlock's kneeling down, the hunter's on the left, and yes, yes, yes. it's kind of as it's slowly zooming in. The mm -hmm. Titan yeah, basically looks like it's almost in like the chain mail, kind of mostly the gold, black, and gray. Yeah. But then it's the warlock and the hunter, and it's basically their two cloth pieces. The robe and the cloak have the teal. Yeah. Now, is that yeah. teal coloring always there? Am I forgetting? Or is that kind of a new touch? Yeah. That's a new touch. That's like a new shader touch. I wasn't sure if it was a shader color. or what, but like the teal is like, yeah. that wasn't quite there. I didn't think. Yeah, that that wasn't quite there. I, I agree. The thing too about, again, like I said, I mean, look, man, the way you have to look at it from a PvP standpoint, right? The PvE guys that are like kind of bashed it a little bit, okay, the rematch. Remember E when Age of Triumph came out for D1? Mm -hmm. And they brought back Bolt of glass. It was the same, but they added a little. Oh, they added the extra. Those are some of the best looking armor of all time. Exactly. They, they destroy Again, all now, of their armor sets. Right. Now, granted, we didn't get the level of chroma and extension to that, you know what I'm saying, level. But I like we got the, the glows, the, for the people who go flawless, the little touches and stuff like that. Again, first one, you're bringing the feels back. You're getting people that love this mode. Those are the moments they remember. So this, don't get me wrong, this was tastefully done. They will give us you guys will not trust. Me. But continue. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we've got uh, <laughs> similar. So we'll say very similar armor to Destiny One. Um, they're hearkening back to the Egyptian theme. You've got the Anubis helm for the warlock. You got the little bird beak on the Titan. Uh, you got the eye for Osiris for the hunter. So those are similar looks. But you did call out one thing. They're definitely making a throwback to the flawless ornaments, but you're making the armor yes. pieces glow when you go flawless. And it's a weekly yes. thing at the end of the week, gone. Yeah. So, I mean, it's gotta be something you continuously do earn and go to the lighthouse. So that's one of those things where it's going to be like, if you want to glow, you got to do it every weekend. 
Oh yeah, you got to do it every week, baby. You got you got to shine. You got to yeah. shine for oh. <laughs> now, bro, I am so hyped. I know you, you are. I know you are. You have no idea. It 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 literally was Christmas for me. That this is the PVP guys. We've been beaten down for so. How long has trials been going? How long has it been? I'm trying to think when it dropped off in because year one of Destiny was year one. Uh, curse and War Minds. When did it leave? Because it was I, before I, I, Forsaken. I, I, they didn't just like end with Forsaken. It was gone before that, right? It was gone before Forsaken. So, I mean, you're so creeping not quite remember, two years, but like 15 months, something like that, like a year and a half. Like a year and a year, at least a year. That's a long time, man. And we're going to talk about other modes and other we got a ton to get into. But, um, yeah, man, we, we're going to see. But the, the only thing I would say, let's get back on track, is the only thing that made me cringe was free. And I heard free. I'm like, I don't know how I feel about the masses getting in. And then, obviously, we did find out at the time the artifact. And me and you had a very extensive oh, quickly. discussion yeah. back and forth over text about that. So, um, yeah, let's let's get into it, E. Let's okay, get right so into it. this has all happened in, like, the past day and a half. Like, the time is weird because this has been a whole lot going on in, like, two days. So one of the biggest controversies for all of this in um, the developer inside that little Vidoc thing, they said power matters. Yes. Now they had not clarified yet, but a little bit later between Destiny Roundup and Reddit and Twitter and all these things, there was a question out there about power mattering, wondering if the artifact was going to affect your power level. And up until about three hours ago, it was going to. Yes. And this was, I mean, I can't tell you how many tweets, videos were made, Fallout put his one out there, and that was his big one. And it was very justified mm -hmm. because the big issue what with... Fallout I missed it. What? Oh, he had, a whole, he had a whole video about it. Oh, he went in? Oh, he had a whole video about it, okay. yeah. He's not the only one. There's, I mean, there's a lot. Like, the main issue, you have two main issues that, that, like, everyone's going to work. Okay, three. One is just if they deliver on rewards, we won't know that until we get them. That's fine. They're just going to hopefully deliver. Second one, right. cheating. We know it's going to be apparent, even more so on PC with aimbots and, you know, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, so your IP isn't hidden, so there's lag and DDoSing, all that stuff. That has actually been there since, like, D1. Right. It's just going to, it seems to be more and more apparent as people seem to get smarter about it. Right. But the biggest one that I think Bungie has control over, I mean, yeah, they can work on cheating, but is the light level. And Cosmo yes. came out and replied to somebody asking, is the artifact, I think it was a tweet or Reddit, I don't forget where, right. and said, yes, the artifact power will be all, like, your artifact power will affect all aspects of the game, including trials. And that opened mm. a giant can of worms. So what was your initial reaction when you actually saw that, hey, this is going to be a thing? Now, as of three hours, this has changed, but we still want to kind of go through the whole process yeah. of these last couple of days. Let's go through again, because the vibes back then, again, I'm getting on my tr Me and you are going back and forth. We're having dialogue with text. And I'm like, E, you and me are on the same boat. I'm like, bro, that is a mistake. Because me and you both know if you separate the artifact grind, and again, I'm lost sector hoarded, or I'm fractalized hoarded. So as a PV ear, you can completely abuse that system. You know, I know guys that are running around and, you know, that's the 1080 light, crazy light. So if those guys are coming into trials with power enabled, this is way worse than like Iron Banner and stuff like that. And I think what happened is they got too safe because they're like, oh, it's not really affecting Iron Banner. The reason why is nobody's playing Iron Banner. <laughs> not as, not as many. Yeah. Not as many as playing. It, it, it's, it, the incentive is not there. So if you put this mode that is free and an artifact grind, people are going to abuse it. So I am so glad we got to where we got to today because that really would have put a dent. That even more worse than me than anti-cheating. Like in the back of your mind, I think uh, Tassie said it or somebody said it. I forgot who said it on Twitter. You're always going to think, damn, why did I lose that gun fight? Was that percentage more? You know what I'm saying? Because that guy was 1100 and I'm 980. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, M, it was, yeah, it was like Imtash had a video. Him and a couple other like yeah. big predominant people were sitting there playing like Frostbolt and Glad, and they were just chatting. Mm -hmm. And he posted up the video of the, them just talking. And basically, the right. biggest thing is like 
some people say it's like some people always worry things in this game are designed for streamers. Right. The hardcore, dedicated, play crap load of hours. Those are the type of people who would likely right. see one of the biggest advantages of this. I mean, yeah, Absolutely. you can go farm bounties and lost sectors on the moon and do that over and over and over. That's, I mean, the people who still play a crap load are going to get an advantage. But a lot of your predominant people where this is their job mm -hmm. still did not want this. Because, again, it's the idea yeah. for the masses to have a chance. Because the later and later and later you get in the season the bigger that disparity is going to be. And especially if somebody's like, hey, a little slow on the season, they jump in, they jump into one oh. match, and they're like, hey, I'm like 961, cool, I'm working <laughs> on leveling up, but hey, let me go try trials. And this dude is like power level 1020, and he's got a 60 power level delta, and he just, well, who's, who's he just, the lighthouse he just <laughs> steps all over these people. It's not going to be fun for them. And then your trials who's population. Going to the lighthouse today? And then you're, let's link up. You're done. <laughs> The LFGs would have been lit. <laughs> but then your trials population that has potential for a new thing is going to drop off hard and fast. And that's the issue. Yeah. They don't want this to be a mode where people are like, hey, it's no fun. I'm out. Like, yeah. they want to make sure that even the casual people, yeah, you may have like a 10 level difference if you're not working pinnacles. And that's like incentive to go in there and do some pinnacles so you can have that closer yeah. match. But we're talking a max of 10. We're not talking about 50 for a casual mm -hmm. person. So yeah. that is huge, huge, huge that it would have been bad. Now, Ooh, I'm just saying three hours ago, roughly like whenever that came out, Luke Smith himself tweeted Ooh. that all PVP power enabled modes will not include artifact power. So that has been changed. And if you want to see if they listen to the community right there, they had it in the they had it in the developer insights. Cosmo basically still official from Bungie, community manager, saying it's there. And a lot of people, and then they turn around and switch it like forty eight hours later. Shout out to the community. Shout out, shout out to the community because let's be real, our complaining <laughs> did enough damage. And and again, I, I really the only thing, E, I gotta be honest, I question why they were fighting. I, no, I guess I saw a tweet too, and I was wondering. It's like, and there were three the things. Process. Yeah, I was like, what was the mm -hmm. thought process? And there were three different. Like somebody was like, is it this, this, or this? And the last one, which somebody else agreed with, I wish I could find the tweet. Basically, they said they had done testing, and it wasn't as dramatic as they think. But the perception mm -hmm. of like the general audience still thought it was yeah. going to be enough. Yeah, it, it, it just again in the current structure of the sandbox. With this bounty grind, where every activity that you do gives you experience, right? That's the new destiny, right? Now. So this this whole loop, gameplay loop, doesn't it just doesn't sit well. The artifact just goes against the trials power level enabled concept. It just doesn't mess. And it, I, I don't know why they were being so stubborn, but in, in their defense, they they they, they manned up. They made a last minute change. They called an audible in the fourth quarter, yeah. very last minute. And I'm thankful. Now, I just want to talk special one thing. I want to shout out my boy Mikey Moore in the chat um, in reference to cheaters. Now, look, I'm with you. A lot of people say, hey, that's even worse. I get that. Now, in their defense, remember about two months ago, they were talking about these new heightened security measures that they're ready to roll out. The band hammer is going to be super late. You know what I'm saying? So we got to see. We got to hold their feet to the fire on that. I am impressed that they even mentioned it, because we know that's going to be imperative. But I, I, I kind of need to know how the quest is to get in here with this whole it being free. That's my only last yeah, word. Yeah, and I saw I saw yeah. one person say, be like, dude, give me a seven-hour quest to get in trials. Make it a hell of investment the first time. Yes. So those free accounts just be like, oh, let me go over here, shoot five people, and I'm good to go. Like, nah. no, you need, it, you need it to be a lengthy investment so those yeah. cheaters have to actually work hard if they're going to get into it, and then if they get banned, they're like, God, I cannot keep doing this, like, five-hour thing just right. to go play another match. Like, it needs to be I, – I mean, I'm okay. I know that sounds weird and stupid to be like, I want to spend, like, six hours in the game just to be able to go do trials. If that keeps cheaters out of it for a one time – I don't need to do it every time, but one account-wide right. thing, yes, please. Yes, like, then that, because that it, would be it can't be too yes. short. It cannot be, yes, like, that, go that, do a PvP match, go get ten kills, and then you're going to – it's got to be you know, a long, lengthy thing. I'm almost willing to deal with an Izanagi-style murder. 
<laughs> it's a doggy well, okay. Maybe before. not waiting on that oh, rare TV. bounty. Don't 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 rare bounty us there, Cognito. Don't don't do that. Hey, if it means kick the cheaters out, think about the people who really who really want to play trials. If you got an is a doggy, yeah, think about how bad you want to play. <laughs> hey, I would be bad. I might be a little. I might be a little excessive. But. No rare bounties. But yeah, the idea is generally that we want some pretty decent hurdle for the people who can just be like, oh, I'm going to go make a new free account, that they don't want right. to do that a lot. I mean, the cheaters right. are going to be there. Some are more about it. And the other thing is, as they're saying, those banhammer tools are going to be quicker and the appeal process is a bit more. There's going to be an automation of like the ban is going to be somewhat automated. The appeals are going to be a little quicker. Yeah. If you have anything happen to you, report them. Like just because if they start seeing they multiple things, back. everybody get ready. Yeah, it's like if you now don't be a, like a jackass and report report people who are just <laughs> beating be you. Idiot. Yeah, don't report people who are just beating you. I mean, that's just the game. But if you see somebody is cheating, you think it could be report them because if they get multiple like interactions on one person, that's going to probably trigger something and it's going to check a couple things and it's probably going to go quicker. So that Absolutely. automated process was set up for trials. I can bet you that. Yo, Bender said he reportedly bought to speak me. <laughs> Snitches on deck. <laughs> Y'all are ridiculous. Let's go. So, the I'm curious about the quest. We've yeah. got trials not affected by the artifact and Iron Banner too, which is good because I got tired of that crap too. I'm like, if somebody's got like ten levels on me, they're not gonna out that like. Yeah, there were so many things to be. Why am I not like one shotting? Oh. Yeah. So we'll get into sandbox changes and stuff a little bit later. Yep. Yeah, oh, we got stuff to talk about. Baby. So we much. Got stuff to talk about. Wow. So then mm -hmm. you got the mm -hmm. trials release. I'm trying to think of anything else in that video. Got the three new maps, three v threes, elimination, still similar yeah. loading screen, like duking it out, uh, mm -hmm. power enabled, then not enabled. Right. Uh, the quest to get into it, so it's free, but you got to do the. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else we know about trials that we haven't covered yet? Just again, like I said, that the, the, like I said, the armors. We saw a little some hints of some guns and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And, so um, yeah, yeah. One of them was looks like an ornament for Outbreak Perfected. Yes. Straight up an ornament because yeah. that gun looks too unique. I, I, I was so happy with Outbreak Perfected. You know, being that that went through that long quest line for that gun, I'm so glad they preserved it. <laughs> Hashtag save the gun. Hashtag save. Hashtag save, save some of the guns. <laughs> Save some of We go get to that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. Chat's going to kill me, so it's fine. Yeah, that's it. Uh, but, yeah, so we know Trials is coming. Starts on March 13th, so it's the first Friday. It's kind of like the raid of the season, three days in. Yeah. Now, with, with the artifact not affecting power, we mm -hmm. do know that you don't have to farm as many bounties. Now, you could start stockpiling some bounties if you yes. really want to. Get a little mm -hmm. ahead of the game. But the artifact's mm -hmm. not going to matter. So it's really right. just about your gear. So stockpiling bounties, yeah. not going to do that much for you. Now, if you want to mm -hmm. go raid, run nightfalls, go run the dungeon between now and then, get a few extra pinnacle drops to be a little step up if you've been slacking, like this guy. Mm -hmm. um, then, yeah, Friday the 13th will be quick, and you might be a few, few levels under. But I can tell mm -hmm. you, yeah, it's not going to be quite as crazy, which is good. And the experience right. won't affect anything, so you don't have to save one bounty. I'm so happy I don't have to, like, bounty farm I'm right now. About that. Now, I got a comment, though. The only thing they got to bring back is they have to, obviously, the classic system, the boons, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I want to know about, but, like, boons and stuff, because that's, yeah, that'll be interesting. They need the trial bounty back. Mm. They could remember, there's a lot of people in the chat that I agree. Yeah, that was Listen, a later edition. I'll be the first to admit, your boy did not get his doctor to pass him, you know what I'm saying, a debt. <laughs> I had the regular Walmart version. From the, the bounty, the one that you completed when you had played a certain amount of matches, amount of kills, because what that does is that incentivizes guys to look. I'm not good enough to go to the lighthouse, but at least I'll keep playing because I got the chance every week for either a trials weapon or a trials armor, and that is key. So we got to see that. I want to know that loop. We, we got to know what else is going behind that loop system behind there. But if they bring back the trials bounty, that's going to keep the casuals to at least try. Because let's be real, it's super sweat, right? Oh, yeah. There's nothing more discouraging than a huge amount of people not getting to the lighthouse, right? So we got to get that popping 
you know, so that those bounties when they, I think that was like the second season of Trials they introduced yeah, that. Yeah, they brought it later and, and that, it made a difference. Yeah, <laughs> not even later. That really got me to play Trials because at least if I didn't go, I got something. You know what I'm saying? Just for playing. Uh, the other thing we did see from Luke is uh, that matchmaking is going to be based on connection and also Ooh, on your card state. One. Yes. So it's card state connection based matchmaking. Now, if you were like, what is card state? If you guys don't know Trials and if you guys are newer, that's totally fair. It hasn't been in the game in ages. Basically, you have a punch card. You have a certain number of wins you're trying to get to complete the card. And you have a max number of losses before your card basically is done. So, generally, it was trying to get nine wins, at least in Trials of Osiris, it was nine wins, and you had an option of three losses before that card was done. Now, the big, big goal, which is why we built the beacon, is to try and get nine wins, no losses, and go travel to the lighthouse. When you mentioned the Adept gear, that's where you yeah. got it. That was the Adept, that was the, later on, it was primaries that had elementals. It was, you know, your bigger pieces in this, at this point, is going to be your pinnacle drop of probably at least for sure a pinnacle drop every week yeah so it's definitely a pvp pinnacle drop and I'm, that's kind of the big one we don't know is the rewards yes we don't know is it going to be like a high level piece of armor is it going to be a masterwork piece of armor is it going to be yeah. just a weapon is it a special version of a weapon with like another perk on the end like we don't know how that stuff's going to work yet. That armor bonuses. Please let it not be like the dungeon armor. That dungeon armor is just <laughs> BS, and I'm trying not to cuss right now because I really want to. That dungeon armor, yeah, it comes masterwork. If it's masterworked at 62, I just want to slap that armor in the face. Yeah, it's terrible. Right. You got a 50 stat roll. Armor. Yeah, you have 10 energy, so you can use all the slots, but your stats are terrible. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so please, like... The, the trials rewards have to be good. Yo, he's in his bag. He said, "Going flawless guaranteed five enhancement cores." I'm dead. <laughs> you know, they pull and that that's down the, the that's the other thing though. They need to get prisms. They need to get shards. Those need to be involved. Like, if you go seven wins, maybe that's a shard. Like, maybe that's a shard. Or it needs to be something like that a week to be able to have a PVP version to get these currencies. Because right now just in these crazy 980 nightfalls for those shards, they need to spread the love on that one. Those Ascendant yeah. shards need 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 a bit more out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So upgrade materials, solid armor. I want, like, weapons that are worth the grind. Like, you go nine wins, you better hope that drop isn't just like a regular rapid hit kill clip, like rapid hit kill yeah. clip auto rifle. It, it's got to be something different. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping. I just don't no, know if they're going to go big, and we'll get to the weapon discussion a little later. But I do want them. I I do want them to stand out. Even if I have a struggle getting them, I still want yeah. them to stand out so the people that I do love it. PvP enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I will say this though: um, I'm entertaining the thought of it would be kind of cool if they had like a trials exotic. I don't know if they do it, but I think it would be cool. You know what I'm saying? But let's, it'd be let's, cool to have a quest. Like you go to the lighthouse yeah, and you get a quest. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. What else we got? So, and the boons will help. If you guys don't know what the boons are, basically they would do different things. One of them would count a win as two wins, so you wouldn't have to get quite as many. Mm -hmm. Another one would kind of give you a get out of jail free card on a loss. And there was yes. a third one, and I cannot remember what it was. Uh, one was like a one was like an extra win. Your yeah, first win well, there was like a double. Win. Yeah, one would count as a double. There was did one just like. There was three. So you yeah, had the double, yeah, the mercy. You had one counter, double, double, and the mercy. And there was a, I can't the remember the third. If anybody yeah, else does, let me know. Either. Damn, I'm forgetting the third one. Yeah, I'm forgetting. Yeah, I want that armor to be 60 stat at a minimum. You guys are joking yeah, around with like 50 minimum. and 49. You guys can get and the hell also, out of here. What would, do you think they would offer ornaments, like trials ornaments? You think they, or you think each season of trials... Seasons might, like Seasons might be ornaments. Season might be ornaments. Ornaments or different armor sets. I could be mm -hmm. like, I mean, I would like there to be like a set of armor and ornaments from Trials, but if it's mm -hmm. going to be refreshed on the seasonal basis, I don't know how frequent they can keep building. Again, yeah. we don't know where, we don't know how many sets of armor they can build in the game each year. So, or each season. Right. Good point, good point. But like a good start. I mean, I'm excited. I, I can't yeah. wait there to see what they cook up award wise. And like I said, they got the formula, we got the TV, we got the elimination. Got the, I, oh, I know what I need though. 
I need trials specific armor perks. For example, back in the day, they used to have stuff like I do the, like a little or... bit, yeah, a little quick res, a little bit something that really helped with the mold. You know I mean, what I'm saying? That, that's across the board in the game. I want raided, per- I want raid perks too. Fact, fact. <clears throat> now let me ask you this though: Did we get trial mod? Gonna have to see what the hell this artifact looks like because we don't Ooh. know if it's PVE. They did state uh, anti barrier is gonna matter in PVP now. Oh, we're gonna talk about the Titan. Yeah. So that'll be a thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I'll be curious yeah, if like there's anything a bit more PVP focused because Trials mm-hmm. isn't going away after this season, so I don't know if they'll build the artifact around that as much. Yeah. So we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. Trials is back. Life is good, y'all. Life is good. Yeah. So Let's get to it. What else we got? Phase two of a crazy 24-hour period. If you guys have never read one of Luke Smith's director's cuts, go <laughs> dig up the old ones. They're all amazing reads. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> now, oh, you guys hear a disgruntled Cognito on the other side of this alcohol. podcast. We get some drink. Let me put spike this. Some of the all alcohol we could get. Shout out to Bender with the bits. Thank you very much, sir. I like the little sword <laughs> animation. So, basically, sometimes Luke Smith will come out and do a director's cut. He is the game director. Coming from that high up, he's got perspective of those guys play all the time. How are things in the studio? What is the community like? What have they learned from the past six months to a year? And they're kind of give a retrospective look and also a glance into the future to either explain changes that they know are coming and what they learned these things from. So as we go through, um, he still, I mean, I'm going to go and hit like highlighted bits of this thing. I did a video on it separately. I gave my thoughts on Mm -hmm. it. So I'm going to be kind of more bouncing stuff off of you, but I'll still be here. Mm -hmm. Um, the big thing is they want destiny to be exactly what they've said before an action MMO single evolving world that you can play anytime, anywhere with your friends. And they said, it's a game they want to keep building on, but they always have to make sure they do it with the creative and work life balance that is sustainable for all the employees at Bungie. And this is one of those things. If you guys are keeping up with like game development, especially current and new stories and things, some studios do not treat their employees with like the respect of their time and work-life balance. They want them working 80, 90 hours killing themselves to make sure they pump out content as fast as possible. Now, most people who get into the game industry have a passion for games and they're building things that they have passion about, so it may not be as much. But again, some employers can take advantage of it. Some of them want to respect their time. And Bungie has been through that before. They've been crunched. They've done the Halo things. And back in those days, they killed themselves for hours. They decided yep. after all that was done to say, we're not doing that anymore. Now, they may go through times of like, yeah, we're going to be working some extra hours. But it's not like insanity. They do draw lines. I mean, there was the Lord of Wolves fix. We could either do the Lord of yeah. Wolves fix now. Or we can wait two weeks, have a normal development cycle time, and we'll get it in the next hot fix. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those things. They call out little things like that to say, hey, we're still going to give our – it's a video game. We're not going to kill our employees. We'll fix it as soon as we can. And that's just a balance that people need to, again, remember. These people have lives. It's not like, oh, this game isn't working right for me. You (laughs) you must fix it right now. You can't sleep or have lives. Like, if you go to work in your job and your boss is like, well, these people want this thing, so you now have to work 70 hours in one day. You're like, well, I can't do that. Well, that's what you have to do. Like, there's a point where you got to draw a line. And I just wanted to yeah. call out that they just re- take, a, take a second and remember that when things are not fixed as quickly as we would like them to be. Absolutely. And I want to I want to double down on that from this standpoint. Of one thing that, first of all, shout out to Luke. I, I love that we won't we say this every director's cut, but I, I still think it needs to be emphasized. Bungie is probably the most transparent game studio I have ever covered in the history of gaming. Most directors, most game designers, most studio heads will never give you the kind of things this guy is giving you. The thought process in his head, the thought process of the studio, also telling you about bandwidth, telling you about their former partners and how things are now structurally. So, I got to respect it. Regardless, do I agree with everything that we're going to get into? No. But at the end of the day, (laughs) I respect it because you know what? Most game devs would never tell you none of it. Trust me, I'm at PAX. Dudes will go out of their way to not reveal information 
until they feel comfortable until they until they're ready. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it is. He's giving you a feel like, look, this is what we're gonna do. You know what I'm saying? Now when you do stuff in this fashion that softens the blow for the man, you know, for the man. Doesn't get everybody still happy, but things they may not like, which we're gonna get to. At least because you know what, so you know what this guy didn't have to tell me that. He delivered the bad news to my doorstep. We didn't have to do it. So let's get to it, man. Yeah. Uh Ooh, so God. And one other thing they also said, and this is actually a bit of a comfort too, uh, yes, Luke not. Smith, especially up at his level, it's him, Mark Noseworthy, who are just the few people that are him, Pete Parsons. There's about three people up at the top. Mm-hmm. There was a time when they broke off from Activision where their nights were focused on, will Bungie survive? That was their that thought. Is. Will they survive? That are is. we going to get through this? And they said, now it's where can Destiny go and how can we get there? So they've Back. they've made that switch over mm-hmm. to be an independent publisher. They see that this Back. is like a a possible thing that they can maintain. Mm-hmm. And that's good news. Cause the focus isn't on, are we going to stay afloat? Okay. It's like now, how far are we going down river? And I like that. That's mm-hmm. just a good thing to hear. So Absolutely. the big thing that he wants to focus on, cause this is his little quote that I do want to read. When I came okay. back from the holiday this year, something about destiny felt off to me. Season nine is to me, the best winter season we've had done in destiny two. And I'd say I'd probably agree with that. It's been a really good agree. season, but Bye. something felt missing. And my, so I agree, I've been really casual. At least I feel like I've been casual yeah, this season. Okay. Uh, and that missing element is what I think we need to focus on throughout 2021 and into 2020. Uh, throughout 2020 and into 2021. And he said, aspiration. A hope or ambition of something, of achieving something. Now, I mean, he states later on, and I think this could have been even one of Dado's videos quotes. He's like, there's so much to do and none of it matters. That was one of Dado's videos. There's a lot of things to do in this game, but the feeling of it mattering has kind of fallen away Back. a little bit. Back. It's easy to grind. But he's like, aspiration and trying to achieve something is different for everybody. And he said, I'm not so naive as to think we can make something that matters to everyone. All have different values, goals, and time. But I do right. think Destiny 2 can do a better job of enabling players to set short, medium, and long-ter- tor- long-term goals to work towards. Mm-hmm. And I think this was just a huge piece to know there's going to be challenging content, but yeah. whatever is a challenge to you, to me, to somebody who has like three kids, but still wants to play this game, who works 60 right. hours a week and is a lawyer, but still likes to boot up Destiny occasionally on the weekend. Everybody mm-hmm. has different things they go for. Some people are like, hey, I'm just trying to get to like level 20 in the season pass because I got to play this like an hour a week. Then there's people mm-hmm. who like play the game for a living and they're sitting there at level 300 because they don't have anything better to do. I'm going to try mm-hmm. and solo Nightfalls. You're going to try and get to the lighthouse. Everybody has different things. Some are longer, some are short term. So Bungie is never going to be able to win every single battle for every person. Absolutely. But they are going to try and at least work on getting better at setting different standards for different people and getting goals out there that each kind of level of player, be it the casual, the hobbyist, the the insane, hardcore, whatever you want to call those. But like giving each like level and tier try at least the best that they can within the bandwidth of their studio, something to aspire for. Right. So overall, I mean, that's one of their goals for this stuff. Mm -hmm. So the first thing he talks about is seasons of change. Yes. So they've had a couple seasons under their belt since Shadowkeep, and they've been going through discussions internal. They're seeing like, hey, how do the seasons feel? How do the people in the studio feel? What's the community talking about? What are the numbers? How is their engagement? What is their data showing? What's their historic year over years? Like all this stuff they're looking at. Mm Mm-hmm. And they said when they're looking to take when they're looking at seasons for year four, they're already talking about year four. We're talking six months in advance right now, and we aren't even in our next right. season, and we got two seasons to go to get there. They yeah. said there's some things that went well in the past couple seasons. There's some things we need to work on. The ones that went well, they say the seasonal narratives have started to connect to one another, and also those seasonal quests and bringing back Saint Fourteen. And I will definitely say the narrative this season, Me. so good. Uh, another that. one they said the simplicity of the battle pass just like getting the battle pass in there i don't it doesn't hurt anybody and i think it's only a benefit right. is it perfect probably not it could use some tweaks right. but it is in addition to seasons we did not have before which i think only adds value mm-hmm. um i mean how have you feel i know for the narrative for you that's always a big one so have you felt oh. even without a raid without you know any big major we're just talking about a couple seasons how is this how's the story from heiress to saint how these past six months been for you i mean it, it, like i told you it's a weird thing because on one side i do understand the people the hardcore that were complaining about emptiness and their feeling of that 
But for me, he made a point in this um, director's cut. The, 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 these, were, these were what he called deep cut for people who were big with Destiny from the very beginning. And for people who know that little vibes and all that, we've heard about the legendary state. We've heard about these, these mythical characters. And now we're getting to see them and they're becoming NPCs. Obviously, Osiris, speak for herself, you know how I feel about that. But at the end of the day, it's lore building and world building that I always felt was missing. So again, they, they may not have satisfied the whole core, but as far as the story beats the deep cut, I like that aspect. Yes, it was a little bit more casual this year. It was very reward heavy on certain levels, but I don't feel it was a missed season. You know what I'm saying? Not going to please everybody. You know yep. what I'm saying? But I felt for the most part, I was able to get what I wanted to get done, jump out, and now they now have to fill that void so that the whole core guys say, okay, I need something to continue to strive for and for it to mean something. Because the theme with the seasonal content on is, is well, why am I going to grind this power level if, oh, you're going to reset the artifact, right? Or why am I going to do this and there's nothing, those no pinnacle, it doesn't, it, it, it was just, a lot of things didn't mean what they used to mean because of the structure. So in that sense, I understand change has to happen. So we look at yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so also when we talk about seasons, they talk about they aren't feeling like they're delivering an evolving world. They said instead right. they're delivering the feeling of ephemeral private activities and rewards that go away. And it's true. We had mm-hmm. the invasions on the moon, which honestly the animation, that alone, I love that animation. When they come in on the moon and the Vex were in there. And this also mm-hmm. comes into how they're going to build their lore. Like if the Vex invade right. the moon and then we push the Vex back, well, you know, they're not going to be coming anymore. But the Vex right. offensive, while it may not have been everybody's favorite activity and they'd get a bit samey after a while, still mm-hmm. is an activity that was built by developers, took time, right. rewards, boss encounter, mechanics, AI, all that effort, gone. Mm-hmm. gone. December, whenever this thing started, it's gone. Right. So, and he made, he, made a, he made a comment about as a studio, they can't sustain that. Mm. They can't sustain putting all these resources towards creating something like a sundial, right? Creating something like a Vex offensive, and then just to pull it away from, from a restance that that's just completely unproductive. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So they know that has to change. And then they kind of talk about, what, again, I know you're gonna get where they want to kind of pivot. Yeah. Um, and he said the Forsaken Annual Pass while he had, there were multiple studios involved, which they no longer have. And again, they mentioned, they're like, hey, our friends at other studios, former studios, but they don't High have Moon them anymore. Vicarious. High Moon mm-hmm. Vicarious made, literally like each studio made a season on the annual pass. Ah. And then you had Season of Opulence, was that Vicarious, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I mean, Opulence was like, you got the Menagerie, you had the Crown of Sorrows Raid, you had the Big Barge mm-hmm. on Nessus. I mean, you had teams oh. building so much stuff. You had... Yeah. Season of the Forge. You had the Forges. That was a little smaller but quicker. Mm -hmm. But you had four different Forges. You had also Mm -hmm. another raid. Remember, these other studios were involved. Those were when those raids came in. When it is Bungie, Mm -hmm. the bandwidth is not there. They only only have so much. But the cool Mm -hmm. thing he said about the annual pass was the fact that if I stopped playing for a season and I came back, like if you played Forge, Skip Drifter, came back for Opulence, there's Mm -hmm. even more in the game than was when you left. Yes, absolutely. The way it is right now is... They're working on trying to, they're trying to make these moments that are memories. Like, yeah. hey, is the corridors of time going to be remembered by everybody who played? Yes, mm-hmm. but they feel like they're leaning way too heavy right now on the FOMO. The fear of missing out is almost too yeah. much because, yeah. like, hey, were you in the game for two weeks? No, I was out of the country on business. Well, you missed the coolest <laughs> thing, but you'll never see it. Like, you'll never that, see it again. That's a bit too much, but that's also like. Whoever developed the quarters of time, every one of the rooms, the end puzzles, the whole thing, to have that go away within a season is too tight. So they're working on trying to make these seasonal activities not be specifically season-esque, but Mm -hmm. kind of last until the next expansion. Right. Because most people, when we go into Season of Worthy, even if you didn't Mm -hmm. play, but if you buy Season of Worthy, St. 14 is probably just going to be sitting in the tower. You don't know how he got there. You're not going to get to go save him. And their Mm -hmm. idea would be, Hey, if you log in with Season of the Worthy, well, before you go do Trials, you probably got to go save this guy. Yeah, how about that? So, I mean, that would be a much yeah. cooler way for anybody at least go. And then if you get to September and you're like, okay, yeah, if you missed it, it's like six months old. Okay, now you got to. Mm-hmm. It's like nine months at that point. Okay, right. well, Trials and Saint are here. Just get on board. Like, it's, it's been <laughs> it's been long enough at that point. Yeah. So, it's just kind of that point of 
they're trying to find a delicate balance. And they're, and they're, those two ideas are butting heads. They want to make memorable yeah. moments, but they don't want to develop content just like that fades into the vapor. That fades into, yep. Exactly. And it's, they, they can't it's, do, it's so they're trying right. to go point. back and forth and balance these two, which is tough. Yeah, absolutely. Resource so management. The idea that they're trying to get at is they mentioned they're trying to take these seasonal themes of like Sundial and the time lost weapons, and as you said, pivot. And put these into some of the more core activities that they're going to want you to play anyway. Right. I mean, the season pass has a collection thing, so you got to go play Gambit for a while. You got to go do a Crucible mm -hmm. ritual weapon. You got to go play Strikes and get Solar Kills and all those things. But then also, and those have a lot of bounties related to them. You go to Zavala, you go to Gambit, you're getting a lot of experience from those. Right. But on the other side, you're like, hey, well, there's this specific seasonal stuff that's gone in three months. Well, I got to go play mm -hmm. Sundial. There's not really a lot of bounties there, but there's these specific weapons, so I got to play Sundial. But then right. I need to go play these other things. So they want to try and work on, in future seasons, kind of melding those two better. Mm -hmm. So they want to take those core activities, the repeatable playlists, not like a quest line, not a campaign, but those repeatable activities and infuse more of the seasonal activity into mm -hmm. those things. So like... Take something like the sundial. I mean, making these six-person match made activities at some point, that is going to get old. So they got to probably right. steer away from that. But they also want to say, like, hey, what if I go in a Crucible playlist and I can get the Steel Feather Repeater? Right. That's the general idea is taking more of these things, spreading them into the playlist. You had, If you had every time lost weapon in Crucible, Gambit, and Strikes, right. and you just spread all of those and you have a chance to get a time lost weapon by those. When that, yeah, that's a better way of handling it, too. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, you're not just giving it away. You're putting it in core activities so that people grind it if they get a chance to drop. It, it's rewarding. I I, I, can, I I like that aspect as well. My question, though, is how are they going to handle It's still a balance because, again, a new season comes. You introduce a new threat, right? You most likely still kind of introduce a new activity. Are they, uh, do you think they're going to pivot away from new activities? They bring it back. They don't want them to go away. Because of the resources? And what that's the think? hard part. It's like, if you make... Like, and, and... I mean, I think the sundial... Yeah, if you can kind of yeah. turn me down. Okay. Me I don't again. know if you can get you much again? lower, but yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I'll try. It's harder to hear you that way, but I'll... No, it's all right. So, <laughs> like, the, I think the sundial is one... And not all work this way, because they're not all going to be this way. But I think the sundial is one that I honestly could see as a strike. Hmm. Like, that would be one that could be... So that way the development resources are not completely wasted. It, it finds another home in the game. Right. And I think that would... Stuff like, like... I mean, making Vex but offensive. It is a bad activity. It may be, you know, from a... And, from a and program, again, that's like, the tweak. It's six-man versus three-man strikes, and that's where I was like, I don't know. But yeah. if they keep making activities that have seasonal themes, like the Sundial is very specific. Something I don't know if anything is going to happen at the end of the season for the Sundial to either shut down, go away, not be right. needed. But I feel like at the end of the season, it is gone. The Sundial activity yeah, is going away. Yeah, especially even narratively, it has to go because you know, spoiler, there you go. Like apparently, um, Osiris or Wiley Warlock, they like so he has some meeting with the Drifter, and in order to one of the key components of the Sundial is some like um. Who could be wrong? Um, Bryce put it out like an Amon Kara part, some type hmm. of uh, dark part, which only I think the way Bife produced it, it can only be one of two things and one piece of like that. So that needs to go because even um, Sagira was like, "Yo, fam, you really doing this?" He's like, "Look, we got it. We have to do this. I have to try to save Saint at all costs." And the Drifter was overlooking; he was brought in to overlook Sundial from a narrative standpoint. So I think now that state is back, they have to figure out a way. Like they can't stay there, at least in my Yeah, so I'll be curious if there's any, like, kind of wrap-up narrative cinematic thing for the end of the season. Because when that's not, that's a whole thing. I mean, you log into Mercury Normal, not there. Which is still weird to me, by the way. It is weird. You yeah. go patrol Mercury, it's not sitting there. But if you go to the Sundial, it's the same damn middle of the planet. Yeah. So it's very odd. That's mm -hmm. That's one of those, unless it's like... Like, here's your normal patrol zone, and then, like, over here on Mercury in another section, this is, like, unless it's <laughs> that, but they don't ever tell you, but it sure looks like it's just, like, plopped where the public event usually lies, so it is yeah. a bit odd. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's the struggle they have right now, is they're trying to figure out a way, we want to give you guys fresh stuff for the season, 
but thematically it fits in just a season. Mm-hmm. We're pushing back yeah. the Vex who wanted to invade the moon. Okay, you pushed them back. We're done. That activity doesn't need to be there anymore. So again, right. they have to try and both balance the narrative like that they're trying to move a story forward, but make that narrative actually also have a functional activity that might be able to stay around. Like, And it's Absolutely. not an easy thing for no. them to do. Like, Hats off to no. all of those people and minds coming together be like, how do we do this and not this and spend... You know, six Mm -hmm. months making a sundial that's gone in three. Like, it spends more time to make a damn activity than it's going to be in the game. Yeah. And then, like I said, for it to go away. So I'm very curious moving forward how I love the idea of the loot pool of a thing like a sundial thus going into core activity. I love that. I just want to know, does this mean now last a little? I just want to know how they deal with cleanup because they did say, he did specify from a technical standpoint, it cannot exist. Another reason why it can't exist, right? Yeah, the game but cannot keep standpoint. growing. They've straight they've yeah, stated that in multiple places. From what we know, based on what we've seen, got out again, my boy Jason Schreier, we had him on. He told us, because I had to ask about he's got crazy connections. And I said, I said, look, they're by themselves. You understand the resource thing. It is Destiny 3, in your opinion, coming. You know what I'm saying? Like soon within that same cadence between one and two with three or four years whatever it is because we're right now we're about time for destiny three technically yeah, I mean, I, three year cadence that's what we did before yeah, it came so at least we figured we'd get the announcement and jason schreier told me on our podcast oh no they're staying with destiny for a while and lo and behold here we are with the dark director cut. luke literally said it verbatim like this is where we're rocking right now Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, For the season's bit. on so year it, four. That's not like, hey, new game. That's like, hey, there's an expansion. The season's coming in September. We're doing this again. Exactly. That's, that's exactly. at least so, another year for sure. For sure. So the vibe is going to be, again, annual pass, annual pass, expansion. You know what I'm saying? Annual pass, annual pass, that kind of thing. And if they do that, then it leads us into what we'll talk about with regards to yeah. new potential. Oh, I'm saving the big one for last. Don't worry. <laughs> that's when you went, that's when you really went shot. Well, that's when I'm just gonna let you jump all over it. So oh, man. But this is the idea is like they're trying to take the thematic world of like these narrative themes and hey, bring in state fourteen and we've got the sundial and time lost weapons because we're traveling through time. Mm-hmm. Trying to take some of that and potentially in year four spin that, either put more of that stuff into the core activities, or maybe mm-hmm. do even more of it into just the core of the game. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I love that. I like the idea behind that. it. I just want to see how it goes. That's cute. So that will be the different the difference is the key. And he yeah. even said he's like, we built a world, and this is the other thing. This kind of this is why I'm doing this and waiting the other one till later because these two both tie together. Yeah, go for it. They said we built a world where players can encounter encounter others, but we haven't made a world with fights challenging enough where you feel like other players matter. Now this Back. is one of those things where there are public spaces on every planet you can just patrol. But I can tell you the only time you may ever even have a group of people together that really might care about being next to each other is a public event. But guess what? Yeah. Almost every public event can be soloed. Yeah. They're not that hard anymore. The only ones who can't solo is typically because of line of sight. It's the one with the three Vex ones because you just usually can't see. But other than that, you can solo every public event, and that's as big as we go. Now, from other games that I've played, I'll use a reference of what I used last week that pissed the world off. World of Warcraft still had massive spaces. Uh No, but, okay, so these are massive spaces. What I would love to see, take a Flashpoint. One, I would love to see a Flashpoint crank the difficulty on that planet up by, like, ten. Back. Two, on that same Flashpoint, there is a world boss, and that has an icon on the map that is a timer countdown, and either every day, every six hours, there's this just mammoth of a boss that comes in, themed to that planet, and, like, you need all nine, however many people can yeah, load into all, one planet, the whole damn, and whatever. Yep. In, the, in the patrol space. Yep. And if you walk up to him, he's just going to step on you and squish you like a bug. But if you got, like, nine Love people it. pairing up wells, bubbles over here, trading off, Back. like, trading damage, hitting crit points, whatever you can do, it takes the whole damn planet. Like, you see it be like, everyone's loading into this instance. We're going to be waiting Back. five minutes. Crazy dude is showing up. We're going to town. Got some unique reward to go with him. That is the type of thing where the public spaces need to get to. That's why I love Escalation Protocol because it gave me 
that feeling. What you yep. just said, because you could not go in there. Even, you could have the best build, the sickest you weapon. Can't solo it didn't protocol. matter. If you didn't have other guardians, you were happy to see another player in your play space, your instant, because you're like, man, we got a shot. Or how happy it was when you joined an instant and you see four or five people already oh, in you're there. You're like, oh, sweet, we can do this. Yeah, like, we're going. Okay, I'm going. We're like, going. you go in and you're by yourself and you're like, oh. Yep, I know. Oh, you got to say, that was the beauty of us. So that idea with wow, what you're saying, fine. Yeah, so Love. that kind of ties into, as they said, Cosmic Gardens. It's the other piece, and we're going to get to weapons on the on the director last. <laughs> Make it so he basically Please. said it, it frequently seemed like Destiny was treading water in terms of moving the narrative forward. They said they wanted to tackle that in year three. And he said that like last season. The narrative mm -hmm. has definitely sure. improved. We've seen errors of stories start to move forward. The pyramid ship has potential, but there's still a lot of things that are just dangling story threads out there we don't have a lot on. So they still want to keep working on that on year four. Mm -hmm. They said the idea of building a narrative that is moving the story of your guardians, plural, all of you forward creating a universe where permanent change is possible and where players can have a meaningful impact is the thing we're still chasing and experimenting with. We've said before that Destiny 2 cannot keep growing indefinitely. There are lots of reasons why this is true. Some technical, some creative, and because the story wants to push into new areas. On the technical side, I come back to sustainability. And this is one of those things that ties into what we're going to talk about next. Mm -hmm. As new areas, features, and event types are added to Destiny, the problems of mate maintenance grow accordingly for the team new changes to the system have to be back checked against all new areas and old ones mm -hmm. it introduces risk and a big burden of our teams to maintain the legacy content the, the bigger this thing gets and as detailed as their play testing goes to make sure is this weapon balanced everywhere is all of these exotics not going to break this thing is this mobility thing going to let you jump out so many different things have to be tested continually if they bring a new exotic thing again that allows the titan to double dash is he going to be able to break the map and get in this specific area mm -hmm. and that could and they have to test every damn th the whole damn world as it grows and they cannot keep doing that so the bigger right. it goes the sustainability of just like maintaining everything still functioning gets harder and harder mm -hmm. so on the other side he said seasons can do some heavy lifting in a sense of giving players a sense of a shared purpose of what they're going for but when we ready expansions, it's a chance to make some more fundamental changes to the game world and its systems. Now, they said, right. we've done significant system changes to all Destiny games right. every time we've shifted an expansion. Armor, Armor 2.0, random yep. rolls in Forsaken, Artifacts in Rise of Iron, Taken King Game Changer. Right. Like, every time, it gets different. And they say, now, we're going to be making more changes to the game world as we go. So this mm -hmm. is a prime example, and then I just want you to, like, ponder while I say this one. Yeah. Currently, right now, there is a ship that can swallow planets parked outside of Nessus. <laughs> you want to know what happens when they talk about changing the game world? Yeah. Nessus just got swallowed. That crap is gone. Mm. You want to see the pier you want to see the pyramid ships invade? What if every planet has crashed pyramid ships? And where those pyramid ships crash in, the veil are around defending that ship. And then, like, mm -hmm. complete sections of, like, the European Dead Zone and Mars have a completely different theme. They've been covered by the veil. They're invading. Like, again, games that have done it before, mm -hmm. Cataclysm and World of Warcraft, they literally split the continent with a crack in the Earth. Mm -hmm. Like, you're talking, ha like, a continent which you could run from top to bottom, which would take you, like, an hour to get to the bottom if you just, like, trotted on your horse. Mm -hmm. They took the continent and just basically cut it in half as something came out of like the subterranean like split it lava like every single zone completely changed mm -hmm. that's the type of thing i think they want to try and get to so i mean mm -hmm. whether pyramid ships crash down and there's invasion spots just everywhere love blowing stuff up or an eraser i'm gonna call your new nickname the eraser <laughs> hey arnold schwarzenegger that wasn't a terrible movie man <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I mean, that's the type of thing. Like if we, we have the pyramid ship sitting on the moon, if that stuff comes in, I want the world to look completely different. If that crap invades, like Rest I want to see failed. everything change. Not to say, but he wants you out of there. Huh? I said, rest in peace, fail safe. You know what I'm saying? On that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, fail safe. Yeah, she done. <laughs> but in E's defense, Luke Smith did say we got too many NPCs. He did mention the NPCs running around. You know what I'm saying? So too many big cast of characters without 
You know what I'm saying? So things are gonna happen, and I think we go. This team that you're on, they seem to have listened to the last word, and they just love all this deletion talk, all this removal talk. Hey, we're gonna we call, can't do it like we're gonna call retiring of some things because it's not <sighs> called deletion, as I was saying. So it's letting things retire, and they will not be useful and powerful stuff. But oh, that's he is encouraged now. He's like blowing stuff up. Oh, good to that way. <laughs> but, goes, I just, yeah, but I will just say, shot. I think the idea of if they can't grow the world, I'd like to see them evolve it. And I think this is yeah. what they're going for. And honestly, I'm very, very intrigued what they might be able to do personally. Because if you take a world of any of the planets we've seen for three years and they want to maintain the, at least Destiny 2 for maybe one or two more years, depending, the world mm -hmm. does need to evolve or people are still going to be looking at the same European Dead Zone patrols for the fourth year. And at some point, that's got to change. Fair enough. So now the big giant topic that is the can of worms that apparently mm. I opened last week. Didn't know it. Mm -hmm. Timing is amazing, though, because, like, Friday, we joked, we talked a little, you and I talked a little afterwards. We were still, like, and then this dropped, and I was reading through it. I tweet, I, I texted this man four times while I was reading it. <laughs> four times. So I'm going to go back up to Luke Smith's interlude before we even get into it. Ah, uh, the pain. I, I want to read this one verbatim. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, putting slow. He's, he's definitely putting the knife to me slow right now. He's twisted, y'all. You see this? This is evil. Evil about this. Continue. Okay. So up in the season, Saki had an interlude. He's like, want, want to do weapon stuff now? He's like, there's more later, but let's turn the waters a little bit. He said, I still, I still really like playing this game. I've acquired almost every weapon in the game. Why Anarchy? Apparently he's still missing that one. Yeah, good, I, I have it. some pretty slick rolls on a few of them and some near-miss internet-approved god rolls on others, which I love that he said that. Spare rations, rapid hit kill clip, full bore with a quick visit to Disappointment Town with Alloy Mag. <laughs> awesome. Like many of you, I end up gravitating to a few weapons and just using them instead of everything else. Sure, Ooh. Outlaw Multi-Kill Clip Breach right from Season of Dawn is nice to have, and I love the art for Season of Dawn, but is it really going to replace my go-to PvE kinetic weapon? Probably not. I know that. I recently sat down with a couple of external folks who love Breakneck. They said it's the only thing they use. They aren't ever going to use another primary in Destiny 2. Why? Because they don't need to. Part of, part of aspiration is the pursuit that comes with it, and right now, they're way... The way we are and have been treating weapons in Destiny 2 isn't actually fueling asp the Aspiration Engine. So that ties into this big topic of weapons. Weapons forever, the problem. <sighs> Should right. you, you might as well continue on. I'm, I'm going. I'm just going to open the can of worms. <laughs> Do you want me to just TLDR this thing? You want me to kind of hit the high? Yeah, hit the high. Hit the high. All right. He's like, I was like, weapons right now, basically, every weapon from Destiny 2 Vanilla, every weapon you get is a weapon you can keep infusing and raise its power level indefinitely. In Destiny 2, with infusion, it's like having every card you own in Magic available and playing on all formats forever. It passively creates power creep, an ongoing Ooh. Destiny problem, which also means our teams, and this is one thing I didn't even think about last time, need Ooh. to spend more and more of their time retesting and supporting old stuff Instead of making new stuff, it reduces uh, it reduces player desire for new items. It, <sighs> it 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 means we ultimately create a ton of gear that doesn't have any value beyond ticking the box. I got it on the checklist. See, that isn't value. It's the actually the opposite of value because it's work that we could be putting into making new stuff or improving old stuff. Our combat oh, I team be a whole bunch of new stuff with all the list. <laughs> Our combat team works extremely hard, and this is like this is one thing. It's here in a little bit later that like last time when we talked about it, you absolutely nailed this one. Our combat team works extremely hard to make weapons feel unique. Each legendary gets their own flavors and special sauce. My side. Sometimes it's the way a gun sounds. And this, I mentioned it last time. Like for me, when I picked up a scathe lock and I fired it first time, I was like, that, that gun is exactly what I thought it should be. It what? sounded right. It like, it fit the theme of the weapon, slightly military, not crazy in the future. It just sounded like that, that gun. Sometimes right. it's insanely over budget range stat. I don't know what he is talking about hand in hand. Do you? I don't know. 
Is that like a yeah, gun or old thing? I don't remember. Sometimes it's the real recoil pattern. Shout out to Fallout and shotguns because that's always RG. Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes it's the art. Like Bastion is beautiful. Oh, it's a beautiful gun. Oh, it's like there are so many. Like I mean, you take per, uh, Outbreak Perfected, mm -hmm. Whisper. I mean, there oh. are so many iconic weapons. Mm -hmm. They're like the art on some of these. They're amazing. Right. And sometimes this it's something five indescribable. Five, this, five, this, 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 this paragraph right here. Oh, there's more. Five, Don't five. worry. He men he mentions mm -hmm. it a little bit more later too, and he said sometimes it's something indescribable that just makes an item resonant with our players, and that is true. Like for me, and this is where I fall into the category of not desiring as much new stuff because mm -hmm. I do. I have it, as you said, I have this attachment to my go figure. And a blast right. furnace is technically a better gun. I've used it. And right. If it had the role I wanted, it would probably be better. Be but because like I have been through so much, I have so many kills, and I know I know myself how it shoots. I know mm -hmm. how it feels. I know what I've done with it. It's like my mm -hmm. old reliable. And mm -hmm. instead of trying that new thing that even might be the same, if not better, right. I'm still gonna fall back on my old reliable. And it, yep. it quite a few people may do the same. Now, not everybody. Right. But generally, that's one of those. It's like you do get attached to some of the weapons. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. I, I, I just want to reemphasize I know this is your. I want to reemphasize one thing. Again, my whole thing with. I know you were making comparisons last week to the world of Warcraft, what they do, and in, in, in reference to the needing to retire, right? All I was saying is these other games, because Bungie is our master. Of gunplay, because Bungie are masters of ornaments and artwork and feel and sound, right? That's why the level of attachment is greater than any other game because they have the best. I'm just gonna say it. They got the best gunplay in the game. In my opinion, nothing feels better. So when you couple that with these beautifully designed weapons, right? That's where that ridiculous insane attack you thought mm -hmm. that's my thing that's my thing now where i will say if you remember if you if this is back to last word the full last word, right i said i could meet you with a compromise on season one the better devil stuff the mi nameless midnight stuff i get that at some point the loot pool becomes too big right you gotta worry about i get that part where I was emphatic, if you remember when we talked about Teles. Oh, I know. You said exotics. Those, and we're going to get to that. So this was a weird bob because on one hand, Director's I'm like, dead. damn, they listened to E. I'm finished. <laughs> and then I said, oh, man, I got to come in and eat this. This is going to be awful. But then when I saw the exotics, I'm like, Oh, win win. We both get what we want. <laughs> so I can go with my head up high. <laughs> because I thought literally when I saw your initial text and what was highlighted, yo, li literally, I'll be brutally honest. I was like, yo, Destiny might be the push. I was I was seriously kind of not knowing me, I was yeah. I would have just had you know, I'd have been kicking and scratching. You'd have, but been, have you'd been butt hurt for a little while. I'd have been butt hurt. I would have had to get out of my feelings and log back in. And something cool happened, and then the love started. But with a static side, that meant because again, you can't, like I said last week, disrespect player engagement. Whisper of the Worm Quest, what that did for the community. Outbreak props, dude. What are my destiny dudes that I haven't even met in real life? He's here at PAX. I'm going to meet him this week, right? The dude showed up. And he showed, he's like, I said, yo, where you at? He's like, yo, I didn't see you today, whatever. Your man had a Trevor shirt. Nice. Like, I knew exactly what oh, I'm yeah. like. These yep. are those moments, those things you never forget that connect to the weapon you put in the blood. For. So for them to say you were going to take that away, I wasn't. That, it, it literally been like, yo, why am I playing your game? Because if you're going to give me these great moments just to say, hey, it's fine. No more now. Go do something else now. No, I'm not doing something else. Baby, go blood and sweat and tears for this. <laughs> so that's where it was It was, It was. was really the exact. If, I, if you remember, the loudest I got was, was Telesto and Whisper. It hurt. 
I don't know what Telesto, like, you didn't go through blood, sweat, and tears to get Telesto. I didn't, but the thing about it, I was thinking about the guy who's like me, who's like, yo, I love the weapon, I need the catalyst. And remember those two weapons, that weapon in particular, Celesto and Sleeper. Oh, yeah, those are are brutal catalysts. Terrible raid. They (laughs) force you to do two terrible raids to get a a BS average. But if you love that gun, you're like, the potential is going to be so much better if I do this. So let me grind it out. I'm in, dude, I am still, for the record, in Fire of Stars LFGs just so I can try to get. The sleeper, a sleeper simulate catalyst. That's how much I love sleeper simulate. Even though it's nerfed to hell, I yeah. want the best yeah. version of. It. <laughs> anyway, Maybe. Yeah, we ju- no, we got we kind of jumped through this topic pretty fast, but um, he even said it too. He's like, I played MMOs, I played action RPGs where you get amazing weapons, and that's the thing. But he stated, it's like, rarely do those weapons feel like an extension of my avatar. And that's what you described, like, that connection to the weapon, because you are looking down it the entire time. That is, you live through your weapons. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they, you, you get an attachment to, like, in Bloodborne, your switch axe, or in Sekiro, your katana is part of you. Yeah. As opposed to a stat stick, as he called something, probably from World of Warcraft, because it's like, yeah, I put it on my character and it has the best stats, but I'm not really paying attention to the fact that it's a different, slightly different looking stick. Like... Right. That's the difference is like we do live and breathe through these things and that's where they get important. Mm -hmm. So he goes back to a little bit of saying, and this is where I'm going to bring it around. The weapons from Vault of Glass could be powerful, unique, and rare. Those were some of the most like wildly sought after things. If you had Fatebringer, you probably had a bunch of Ascendant Shards to commemorate all the times you didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And all those times you celebrated or hated when somebody else got it. But when you finally got that thing, it mattered. But right. there was space in the loot pool. They knew things weren't going to last forever. So if they built this thing that was like capped at level 30, then right. when you went to go to the next thing, well, I got to get something new to be more powerful. And they knew that stuff would not live in trials and live in these things for the forever. There was a, a window on those. There was a an expiration date, per se, where it wouldn't continue to be there. Right. And they said, currently in the version of Destiny, it's hard to find space for some new stuff. We have so many, we're three years into this game, we're looking at four, maybe five, who knows how long this thing could be going, and at some point, how long do you want to be able to use your midnight coup in the newest raid? Absolutely. And that's, and I've seen, I've been, like, commenting on Twitter just to, like, spark fires. I posted a video about the director's (laughs) cut today. My video Mm -hmm. comments... They are probably three quarters just ripping that idea to shreds. They <laughs> seriously don't. are. I mean, there are a lot of people that like, why should I even play the game? If my thing has an expiration, should I even grind for anything? Ooh. And, and I remember, I'm the reasonable one. I'm the one that says, hey, if I compromise. Just, just keep your exotics, right? Yeah. yeah. I know there are some people that are like, hell no. I better. Like, I, I feel sorry, though. For the Leviathan dude. Midnight Cool, a Norgal address. <laughs> Those have been yeah. and that's the that that's the question I keep continually asking everybody. I asked it last week. Mm-hmm. And the general thing is and some people just be like, I want to use my gun forever. Well, guess what? It's probably not gonna happen. But my general idea is like, how long do you want to keep playing Destiny 2 and still be like, Yep, midnight coup. Yeah. At one point, do you do you at like how long is that point where you're like, I should probably not be able to use that anymore. Now, if you say always, then you're just gonna have to swallow this one because it's apparently gonna hurt. Right. But but on the other side, if they saturate the loot pool so much that for them to be able to try and design another weapon, and they do their best to make these things unique. Right. They spend the time to make a unique sound, a firing Mm -hmm. rate, an animation. But how many more things? I mean, Bungie works to make unique things, but how many times can you stack another 900 auto rifle, another 150 hand cannon, and try and make it worth your grind, worth the difference, if you always have like, well, I've got a good 150. I'm just going to pull that. Right. And I can infuse that. I completely get the mindset. All I want to say, the last point, so the argument last week, was that you're right. From a pure technical standpoint, I understand that. The thing comes down to 
in my opinion, if Bungie, let's put it this way, in a perfect world, if Bungie was still with Activision, High Moon, blah, 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 we have D3 right now. I firmly believe it. Now, because that situation changed, that's why we're in this position now. We're basically, it's again, we're not getting D3 anytime soon. So as a result, the way the annual pass pass structure and the introducing of new loot and new and no new game, that's why we're here. They realize every right to your point. They add new guns. Is it really going? To, they add a new post. Is it really going to be better than dad bod? You know what I'm saying? Buy guns or dad bod? At some point, you have too many similar archetypes. And you're just going to revert back. I, everything you're saying is right. The reason why it's jarring is because this length of time should have now been the D3 part where we would have blown up or whatever they be. And then we wouldn't have the painful move. No one was expecting this painful move because this is right around new game time. So now, new game, this is the new way. Right? Now, the question I have for you okay. is the time a lot. Now, from my understanding, they were saying, what, 9? 9 to 15 months. Okay, so let's let's break that down because my thing is now it's like stale milk. Everything got an expiration date according to the Ivanka's plan, right? So do I log Not mine, it's his. (laughs) That's 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 right, Luke Smith's plan. You've got Luke on speed now. I apologize. He listens to the last book. If I do, I will, next time I'm with you, I'll call him just so you can say hello. Clearly, you went to a bungee summit that I wasn't aware of. Hundred percent secret. <laughs> never told you. And, and, and bro, you have to. There's so much sarcasm for you, audio listeners. By the way, you have no idea. <laughs> you have to. Admit, I have to admit, this is probably the funniest loss of an argument I've had in one thing because literally the next week, the man is like, "Yo, everything you about to say, we're doing." <laughs> And you're just like, dude, <laughs> what? <laughs> See, everything you was crying about, we listen to about it from now on. It's the, it, it, the twab, the twabby. <laughs> this week at Bungie Abantis. I'm going to sign the twab <laughs> next to Cosmo. I'm going to look over it and put my part. Yeah, no. I woke up. I said, what the hell is going on? Why are they doing this to me? So anyway, my question to you, folks aside, how do you handle... The expert. Do I get my legendary? Since you're the game designer, do I when I when I get the e when I get the gun? Does it have like a you know due date by <laughs> when it goes out of season? Like how just does it- like that's gonna probably my guess is they have to plan out the power crime. Mm-hmm. Now the way the seasons work right now, the ten 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 whole thing. I'm kind of mm-hmm. hoping that changes in year four as well because I think mm-hmm. that's something they're probably thinking about because the way it works right now, the pinnacle grind is honestly a three month. Eh. Yeah. And especially them taking away the artifact for PvP enabled trials, that's even more meh. Um, so I'm hoping that changes to either a bigger number, or something different going forward. But honestly, if they can plan that out and kind of agree on it, I yeah. would say you wouldn't see a date. You would probably say um, it might, as you hover over infusion, it might have a little tool tip saying max infusion 1100, something like that. Yeah. That would be I, my guess. I, I got to attack this time. He coming up. Who? Right, listen, to Ares? the letter of the law. Yeah, Aries, sorry. No one is disagreeing with you that, yes, technically you can still do it. It's basically not going to be able to be a huge point. So, yes, they do exist, right? But let's be real here. This was the same thing like Icebreaker back in the day when they wouldn't let you include it because they knew that the gun was a problem. But guess what people did? They stood there and they jumped into certain activities, right? And still tried to use those old school guns that would overpower for certain situations just to try to get by. So that you have to understand the Destiny community is created. Now, granted, for pinnacle activities, it's not gonna you're gonna get murdered. Well that's you know why that? especially if it's that nine to twelve months, you'll have an expansion. Yeah. That expansion yeah. has to have like a two hundred three power level, two or three hundred level power level jump. Yes. So that delta of 100 is far blown away. So, like, if you take that into the new stuff, right. you are definitely going in at a massive detriment that you're not going to do much. They Absolutely. have to set they have to set the expansion and that level jump far enough and big enough 
That right. that's you can't even try. Right. Can you and, go and, run and, around and, on patrols? Can you go yeah. in a basic quick play match? Sure. Sure. But when it comes down to the nightfall or the the dungeons, right. the raids, smoke, the new content, yeah, correct. It's been smoke. And in that sense, it's you know what I'm saying. So I, I do understand. I just wanted to be clear about that as far as these. Continue. So you were saying you would still have a date on it, like, or you would say like, I wouldn't have a date but if they if they can figure out like maybe one or two years, however long Destiny Two is going to last, and be like, okay, so for year four, it's fifty, 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 and say mm -hmm. when September comes out, what are we going to be up to? Because this one we're mm -hmm. going nine seventy, nine eighty. Is that right? Yeah. It'll be nine eighty, nine ninety. So then we'd be touching near a thousand. Then September yeah. needs to be like twelve fifty. Yeah. Oh, sure. You need Shout to go. Out. You need to go yeah. Yeah. You need to go like 200 and some odd power levels up. So if you and try and take that into like current content, you are going to be shooting peanuts. Like yeah, it needs to be enough. enough to where you're like, I'm not hitting them. Oh, <laughs> I can't hit them. That's why. But shout out to Outstanding. He said he wonders what this, what this means for ritual weapons. They can put the expiration on. <laughs> they, they can set the on that crap. But I cannot stand. Them, 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 the ones that they gave us, Python, Komodo, those three. Yeah. I if mean, they, that's they kind of thing. That. You think you think now of what you got in, like, the Vex offensive weapons. Mm -hmm. Probably not going to be infused in September. Mm -hmm. But right now you're looking at nine months. Maybe your Dawn stuff will carry into September, but maybe mm -hmm. that's it for that season. I mean, that ye I would probably count on roughly a year. That would mm -hmm. be my hunch. The nine mm -hmm. months is where you picture... Season of Dawn to an expansion. Yeah. When that expansion comes, we out. We go in next. But that yeah. three months, but but that three months before, you can't mm -hmm. nullify that. So the next season, depending, they're trying not to nullify it too quickly. Right. But the question I would be okay with it. But again, no. I think Pitifus is a wrap. I think I think Recluse is getting stale milk. Um, oh well, yeah. No, I mean I think yeah. all of those are going to be old. Yeah, they're all going. Yeah. Well, so Pinnacle, Mountaintop, Recluse, all that stuff is so old. It's going to be outside of a year. Pinnacles aren't going to be in raids. You're not going to have pinnacle. You're not going to have recluse in raids. No mountain tops, and that will change yeah. all those strategies. And that's the thing they said. It is only le it is only legendaries right now. They may do this later on with exotics. I know. I, I'm. I, don't get me. You I was like, you. I was like, you may as well start getting ready to swallow that you one about know, three you, years from I, now. I, this is. You know how like your your parents when they were. They try to force you to take your medicine and you say no. And then, like, they try to sneak it in your food. <laughs> this is the slow easy into. Oh, it's at going some to point, happen. At, yeah, and I'm again, gonna... picture, like, at some point, Whisper gets retired. Oh, now the, I, uh, You know I have more attachment to that gun than most of you guys. Do you have any idea how much time I spent in that mission? Now, this is why. Take heavy sniper rifles. You have Darcy. You have Whisper, and Izanagi doesn't count, but it may as well. Um, <laughs> but those two heavy snipers, can they make another heavy sniper right now? We're going to fight. I'm trying not to fight. <laughs> uh, this is, this is the, when they're, when, again, as they keep <laughs> making weapons with perks and exotics, and it keeps being saturated, take a weapon type. Pick one specific one. How many different ways can you make variety? And again, if Whisper fades away, like going into year five, you can you could get the quest, but, but that gun has a lifespan of like three and a half years. It had a great run. We do a nine and 15 month exotic. At some point, I could see it. Yo, eat, yo Luke Smith, stop listening to this podcast. <laughs> stop listening to this. Are you... Look, I'm trying to get over torture that you put me through. Hey, I'm, exotics aren't happening right now. You can it, just you can enjoy them for as long as you can. Sitting here spreading your evil corruption to bunch. You know they listed, and now you come in for my ex. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? No, no, no. Hashtag save the guns. Come on, y'all. Y'all got <laughs> y'all put exotics out of here. This what I'm doing? saying eventually it will probably happen so they can continue to make new exotics. So what is the point of the quest exotics then? 
You, you had it for had it three for... What years. What you mean you had it? You made me bleed for it. You made me go through hoops. You made me do all this stuff. You made me fight forever. You made me do things in time. And, and how shit. long did you get to you enjoy you that thing? And you got the nerve to say, oh, we, we're tired Thank of Thank you, this. Harperian. Nothing lasts forever. So why play the game? Why play the game? If every year you're going to press the delete button, what is the value? Oh, don't get Thank you, Aries, oh, by the way. I'm Aries so is bad. like fighting for me in chat, man. This is amazing. <laughs> no, okay. No, say exotics. People. Say exotics have exotics. like two or three. It depends on how long Destiny lasts. Now, if Destiny ends at year four and year five, honestly, probably they won't mess with it. If it's year four and they're like, all right, we got D3 coming out 2022. We got one more year. We got to get through seasons. Probably not. If Destiny 2 is truly where they have, if they like, if they completely do a game changer and Destiny 2 is like, they take Destiny 3 and shove it into Destiny 2, then I right. see the exotics being like retired, sunset. Awful idea. <laughs> awful, awful. Yeah, that that is going to be the camel back right there. Y'all getting away with this legendary right now, but I'm telling you right now, just pulling that. Could you imagine? Let me paint a picture. You psychopath. <laughs> I've, been, I've been through whatever you're about playing, to whip up. I've already done that, it. Playing D1. And the legend of the gallery. All you heard about. The legend, the gala. This literally <laughs> happened in Taken King. Literally, the mid now you you gotta happen because D it's coming out. <laughs> Destiny <laughs> one point. year one Galahorn is released like a few weeks before from Zer. People buy it and then you go into Taken King and you can't take it forward. New game came out, and you imagine you just get this magic that everyone says, "Oh my God, finally!" And then. Next week, guys, this is the cutoff. <laughs> yes, what? that is how that is how that goes. Do me know that's how WoW go. This ain't WoW, bro. This that is, is how Destiny that is how an evolving have. game continues to be fresh game. and involved. A gun game. We realize this, right? Yes, we I'm fully aware. Guns in this game. That's no, what we know. no, I've, no. I've been running around poking people with my fingers for five years. Oh, okay. This is, actually, this it's is, my fist. At this, this point, is, I've been fisting that, people for five years. That sounds a lot worse than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about that? What I'll say every <laughs> oh, what I'll say <laughs> there was Bruh. like when when infusion didn't get started, that's exactly what happened. You got it in the last three weeks, and three weeks later, taken cake. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, gotta get, I gotta get at the chat. I'm attacking WD Prescott. This is not Borderlands. Stop comparing. No, listen, Borderlands, that's cute. That's cute. I understand. They have variety. It's a loop game. But you tell, let's be real. Now. I, I should ask, I should say, this, this is preference. And I don't want to disrespect preference. If you like Borderlands, good for you. Guess what? Let's just talk about engagement. How many people are still engaging with Borderlands the way they're engaging? There's a reason because you have the emotional attachment to the gun. You have it. You can't. I can't name, or I don't see people naming these even other games that try to do exotic thrill, division, anthem. They don't do exotic. Okay, then let, let me ask you this: the other they side, they don't. Nobody does exotic. How Destiny do exotic? Any team could try to bite the formula, but it's never replicated to this level of emotional. Tashman, stop your nonsense. Stop your, Stop comparing them to other games that don't have the greatest gunplay that Destiny has. That's why people are both. You see the message boards. You see how crazy. What, do that exotic thing. Do that exotic thing with y'all. What? You think it's bad with me? You wait till you see the mess. Wait till you see Reddit. Wait till you see Reddit when y'all when y'all hit the button. Like, all right, bye bye, whisper. Okay. Bye. So let wait me ask Reddit you. Drop for that. Let me ask you this. Exotics can come forward, but the Leviathan leaves the solar system. You can't go get your catalyst now. Make it a that is that is moving. That is moving the narrative. Graviton Lance. I but you just, move I, the narrative forward. I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm they saying. didn't get rid of Graviton Lance. 
I can still get the catalyst. That's you can still doing. use the gun in basic stuff. You just can't you use just it can't in pinnacle stuff. Pinnacle. You actually get you like can't. you get it better than like most other games that like you level up, you get an expansion, you're more powerful than your old stuff, you don't use it anymore. You can still use it in your basic events. I can go pull my whisper out for 17 years What's apparently in a patrol. Game? What's the percentage of exotic? There's a lot of well, them at this point. How many? Why, why can't we rework exotic? How, why can't we sit there and say, you know what? Why this rework an exotic when you can make a new one? But for what? The gun, there's nothing wrong with it at the end of the day. Would you Listen. rather? Would you rather be like, hey, this thing that was in my inventory, in my collections, I'm sorry, because you're not keeping Ooh. them in your vault. That's been there for two years. Oh, it got reworked. Hey, this thing got retired. I'm not really going to pull it anymore, but I got this new drop. Which is better? What's the value of chasing exotics if they're only to go away at a year? Maybe they have a longer lifespan. Maybe they're twice as long. Who is going to want to grind catalyst and hard content and raid? Because you can use it for two years. Hey. Because you can use it for two years, and then there's a point, guess what? That exotic you've had for two years isn't coming with you into the next raid because it's just I mean, seen right some now, work, and it's it's finally busted. It finally got used too much. Disrespecting player engagement. No, I'm That's not. We We're disrespecting player engagement. See, you this is the point. When you talk about players, respect, it is not respect. Best things in the game. Best things in the game. You want me to grind? You want me to go jump through fire? Oh, but you're going to take this away? Keep that up, buddy. Keep that up. Watch what happens. What? Trust me. That's a death blow. Uh, Y'all can say all this cute loophole stuff all you want. In this game, where guns matter and the artwork and the design and the feel of these guns are the best in gaming, this is your trump card of why your game is successful. You are now going to take that away and disrespect playing the game? Bruh. Watch what happens to this. I'm telling you, that that's the death part. You keep that up. We'll see. We'll see. Well, I'll watch Reddit. I'll watch Reddit. Because right now, they're flaming y'all now. I'm, I'm the one actually defending you, Psycho. <laughs> they're flaming you guys. If you look at the board, you look at social media, do y'all realize what's going Go, 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 go check it out. See what's going on out there. You'll see. <laughs> and I, I, I'm halfway with y'all. Exotics is like, bro. Be hard to log in. <laughs> I'm finished right away. I thought I wasn't good, but you, you got me going. You got, you know, Luke's the it's, please. It's gonna Luke. happen. The length of Destiny 2 will determine if exotics happen. If it's four years in D. Okay, so if you get D3, none of it matters. All this stuff I played for four years, I invested thousands of hours to get this catalyst. Yes, D3, right. all gone. You're giving me a new game. You give me better graphics, dedicated servers. Whole new play engagement, cross play. You're giving me some. If you're going to take from the player, you have to give something back. It's only right. That, it's, 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 it's an exchange. You want That's a player to play your That game. is an entitled That's, mentality. But I'm paying you to play your live service game. I'm paying a you. A live to service play. game. I'm, you said it right there. That's all I'm you had to say. A live. You. Every month you come to me with your handout for ten dollars. Every September Every you come three with your months. handout for thirty dollars, yep. and then you say for your thirty that I pay. You're taking my guns away that mm -hmm. I pay. Yep, Bruh. No, hundred percent. No, Aries. No, <laughs> sorry. They're they're they want to give you new guns. I pay for that gun. Why I can't keep it? Cause it doesn't okay, work anymore. Cause it doesn't work. And you can, you still have right. it. So you and you still have it, but store. it's not powerful. You, enough. you go to the gun store and he comes to your house with stuff. I want to see your face when someone comes in your house and say, yo, it's over. <laughs> I'm this taking is a this video. Stuff Don't even want. try that. This is a video game. That doesn't even compare. Have a real argument. This is the point, and you said it, and that was the perfect word, and I'm glad you did. It is a live service game. You that have I'm a subscription to Game Pass. That I'm paying for. Oh, they just took a game away. Okay. Same thing. But the, here's the difference. You know that when day game passes out, I can keep it. I have the option to keep it. That's okay. the difference. Netflix. The if it goes out the server, I can keep the game. This, the, I can't. You're telling me it's not me no more. Okay, well, what about Netflix? It's a live server. The thing, you, how, 
anybody who has an issue with this argument, the idea is the game wants to evolve. Bungie wants to continue to evolve this. And if we keep hanging on to shit, and I'm going to say it now because it's after about 11 o'clock at night. If you guys yeah. want to keep hanging on to shit that is four years old and has and been through a thousand bullets. Go through hoops. Who made someone go through hoops for anything in Netflix? Who made even go through hoops? So it's not apples to apples. Picture, it's picture, not- picture any, not even world, picture any subscription type thing. Any subscription MMO. But it's not, what are you working hard to, to accomplish by watching your Netflix movie that's going away? Nothing. I'm just, I'm trying to give <laughs> you just, live service. It. I'm trying to give you live service examples of things that do not last forever. Nothing I lasts forever. Mm-hmm. But the point is there's no... A, there's a difference between uh, those live services, and again, there's no work involved to obtain it. It's not like when you launch Destiny, the exotics jump out the screen. It's not like there's new movies that you have all the exotics. You have to earn it. There's no earning in Netflix. There's earning okay, in Okay, fine. Hey, Take the I, Netflix away. I'm Netflix. still going to go back to you're telling me you don't have to earn anything in a game like World of Warcraft. That's the game you're using because that's the game that actually... No, but I'm just saying, if you want to talk about something with a time investment, something you have to earn, something that is valuable to your character, now, it may have been a two-year cycle, so take your exotics on the same thing. When a massive expansion came out and a rift cracked in the middle of the world, and now you can go from level 60 to level 70 or level 70 to level 80, that amazing stuff that you spend hours and hours, and literally I had 40 days on characters of raiding... That stuff at level 70, when you hit level 71, you just literally got better stuff and that old stuff. That. Then how but can I, you understand that because and not the, get on board with the other? It's the so same he, principle. Again, it goes back to what I said. What makes Destiny great? But this you can't keep living in the past. Gun you can't games. keep living on the past guns forever. The game of guns. Okay, here, I'm just going to ask you this right now. Destiny now is going to last 20 years long. Do you want to use, do you want to be able to pull Whisper out in the year, in the year 20 raid? How We're far do I have to set this? Okay, but at some period, point, we have a new game. Doesn't matter, no, no, this is my, this is my, this is going to stick with this argument because this is how long if Destiny 2, D3 doesn't exist. It is going to be shoved into Destiny 2, and Destiny 3 that's is going to be now. Destiny that's, 2. That, that's where we at now. So, Destiny 2 is going to last for the next six years. Right. That's where we at now. Year, year six, that raid, yeah. Whisper should still be allowed to come to that raid at full power. By year six, you should be thinking about a new game. What if they evolve? What if they evolve Destiny two? If they, and they get, if they game, get crossplay, if they switch, we and, like start moving solar system planets. Leviathan eats Nessus. We get Saturn. Like, All of they, those things evolve, and you're telling me Whisper should still come to that next raid? I'm trying. Let to me find, tell you why. Let me tell you why that can't happen. Based on the technical limitations of what they just said right now, they're at almost. I'm gonna say they're at capacity, but they're at a point where they can't keep adding things all the time. They've already. That. That's the I'm saying point. take that oh. argument and set it aside. Say you can't, this is po- because that's the, the the reason why it just can't in, a, in your live service game, this evolving world, right? When you're adding, you're doing new things, and things is evolving. There's a ceiling, there's a limit to how much you can add before you reach max capacity, which then goes then back take in that order. statement and apply right. it to the weapons. What well, because at that point. Why not do the whole group thing together, right? We're at max capacity with the weapon. We're at saturation with the loot pool. To your argument, right? Saturation now. Everything is too much. Too many whispers running around. Five snipers going around. I get what you're saying. Do you? All I'm saying is this is a unique situation because they, they have to extend a little bit longer. That's what getting. I get it. I'm accepting that, right? But the next six, bro, I want a new game. You can't keep feeding me this old okay, game. But and here's the take stuff this away. Is, take the technical piece out of it for a second. Remove that and just imagine they actually are capable. Imagine they yeah. find a way to take the ideas they want for D3. The pyramid mm-hmm. ships come in, Saturn is a new thing, Nessus gets swallowed by a Leviathan, and Kallus drives away. So you got a new planet that I'm literally just throwing shit out there because it could evolve. Right. You have Mars, Rasputin. Mm-hmm. 
blows up uh what's another planet i can't think uh Rasputin blows up io right. okay well now we have access we're reaching a little farther one of saturn's moons we're going to europa so right. the director keeps evolving Mm -hmm. This is something yeah. they potentially could do. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. I'm trying mm -hmm. to get to the end of this timeline for you. Mm -hmm. They continue to do this in D3, and they're phasing out the legendaries, but these exotics, they're still sitting there. Mm -hmm. We're on right. year six, and in year six, this raid yeah. comes out, and snipers are in a pretty good spot. You want to still be able to go You pull your literal... Year one, whisper the worm and take it into the year six raid. There's still flaws in this argument. I don't anticipate the gig for that long. I said set that aside because right. your it's argument true. is you want exotics to last until D3. No, I, How, listen, or, I, I do, right? I do. My thing is, again, between D, anyone who's in the chat, pull up the year that D1 came out and pull up the year when D2 came out. Let's get the year. There's 2014, 2017. So, how many years is that? It's three. Okay. We've reached a common gray ground now. This is what I'm talking about. No, so, okay. I'm saying I wait, understand the time window. I'm saying it, take that aside. They are by themselves. They do not have Activision. They may not. I get what it. if they're. I'm, I'm, I'm pro. I'm with you. So then what I, if their capacity is not Destiny 3? What I if their capacity it. is to so evolve Destiny 2? By themselves, right? With this bandwidth, with the thing, right? I'm saying we can go four to five, right? Four to five, we could go. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you on that. And then you got to do the cover. Two saturated. You can't create the one. I'm with you with that. All I'm saying, but at four to five, we better start announcing a new game. That's all I'm saying. Why can't I have a new game at that? That's not my argument. You are stepping what? away from my question. I keep asking you. Technical limitations of another game aside, within mm. Destiny 2, how long mm. do exotics last? What is your number? Is it three years, four years, five years, 20 years? I is really there a don't... number? To me, if... it's, it's, not, it's not a static question like that. It, it's what, really, what I, I can't give you a static answer to a year on when I should exotic. I can't give you that. that because my whole answer with exotics is tied to the next game. That's why I can't give you a static answer. And, that's I'm, and, and that's why I keep asking you, what if there if there wasn't one? To me, I know exotic, you, yeah. I know you want one. I know we, everybody who is out there expects D3 at some point. At some but point. But I'm trying to get this point through your head. Let's if go. there is no D3, how There's far does to this... Be a, no, stop that. Stop There's saying that. Be a stop going to, There's not going to be you a D3. Just We're going to play the same game forever for seven years you're gonna play d2 to 2022 what, what if, do you think is really you think that's gonna happen really what if they're capable of evolving nah, it? i'm not buying that i'm not buying that at all that we we can we can play this old little bunch game that you playing we not playing that no this is you're acting like this is like some small little indie team of develop are you kidding you know how many people the, are white, like, the whiteboard said year four year five year six year seven it did not say year four d3 right right now because they just separate but we're talking about right year seven of destiny 2 what if okay. it actually lasted that long oh well, let's keep the exotics and then let's go let's rock with it you're, you're going you're seven crazy. years on whisper of the yes is coming. yes yes then okay that's okay. yes i'm on that <laughs> don't get rid of the that's the most valuable thing but you're telling, in the me game. Should, you're telling me at some point an exotic shouldn't be retired in seven years yes yes no retirement of exotics that is tied to that title that was the question now, i was trying to ask you 10 minutes ago I, at least i know where you stand when they retired gallahorn and the d2 started then you could do your retirement that is the most valuable piece of content in the game no you're not doing that I'm sorry. I'm fighting on that. I'm dying on that. I'm dying on that one. At some I'm, point, I, at some can, point, that gets old. Oh, y'all, exotics is the most valuable thing in that, in my opinion. That's just me. Maybe everyone else agrees with you. Bunchy, I'm, I'm if you guys listen one. to this, can can we interview one of you guys? I would love to know some questions. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Anyways, Anyways. Mm -hmm. I finally got my answer. So if you would have you pushed my answer. question, we could have moved on, but you wouldn't answer my question. <laughs> That's what I kept trying to ask you for like 15 minutes and because you wouldn't answer not, me. But, 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 all, all jokes aside, it's not really And I listening. literally started that whole question with, hey, this probably isn't going to happen. But if it so did, that was – because it's a hypothetical trying to figure out how long you want to hold on to this old crap. And you finally but gave it, me an answer. And, and so yeah, that answer, it's really not a static answer. That's what I'm trying to say. It really – it wasn't like I could give you like, okay, five. It's really not. It doesn't work that way because it gets. But inside. that's. We, but we that, gotta, But if they want to make it a continually evolving, their literal mission statement at Bungie is to make right. this an ever evolving living right. world. If that living world still has a two on it four more years from now, okay. Whisper still is there. Yeah. Why? Why? See, we're not going to paint this narrative that Whisper is holding the game back when you got. All these zillions of Whisper, legendary Whisper, Telesto, in Outbreak, Prime, all of those that You've have been in the game. You've got all these zillions of guns in a legendary loop that you're taking and retiring. There's your answer. That means that there's guns in that archetype that's going out. So if those are going out, why we got to destroy the exotic? Let, let's stop that. Why the exotics got to go? If there's a small percentage in each archetype, right? There's no you. You're getting the majority of the guns already. You've already won E. You're getting the majority of the guns in the game. That's the majority. Do the percentages. Exotics are not the majority in the game, and they're rare, and they're hard to get, and you make it be work for them. That's my point. I'm not. I'm dying on that. I don't care how long it is. You can't do that. That's just my opinion of how I feel about the game. And there are many. People that feel as strongly as I do. Get Twitter, or get Reddit. I'm just telling you that. I'm not alone on this. I know the chat, y'all think it's crazy. Oh, old man dies with his exotics. Fine, I'll be that dude. I'll be the dude. I'll, I'll take one for the exotic team exotic. But okay, I guess at some point, does it not get, does it no, not feel like there's no, a refreshment no, required? No, it feels amazing when I look at that whisper of the world. I know what I did. I know the date I did it. It was like the date. It's I not like you have to have it in the game to remember everything you did with it. You know you but, were, you lived it. Unless your memory sucks, you know you did it. But why do you, why you have to take it away? Why are you coming in like the old oh man? Because it's like three and four you? years. It's because it's three and four years old, and we're that's going on to you, other planets. You, you don't have that emotional attachment. But for, for me oh, and a bullshit lot of on me, Whisper of the Worm, do I not have emotional <laughs> attachment? You can kiss my royal ass right yes, now. Because you made, I was, you know what happened? Even my attachment. When I watched your video, you made that amazing. What's going to happen? Think of, oh, I'm going to kill you right now. What about your blood, sweat, and tears for your video that you made giving people, rookies, and all the people that had no confidence to get that gun, making those jumps, doing those. All your videos are for nothing. You can delete your YouTube channel. What's the purpose of having a YouTube channel? What's the purpose of being a content creator? Do you help with all these people, make these exotics, do these quests, and then it don't exist no more? That kills they have the, a, it that's killing some, their own community if they do that. No, they're not. Yes, they if, are. Your no, no YouTube video, nothing. you expect to have a lot of views two years later, much less you're talking about seven. No way do I expect a YouTube video seven years from now and people are like, hey, I want to go get my exotic from year one Destiny. Hey, Ibantis has this video from seven years ago. Now, seven no is way. excessive. Seven is excessive. And but that's why two, I asked you three, that. Year three, bro, people still going to want to know how to do these things. And I didn't say two or three. I'm trying to make it extreme to make you pick a number, but you're cool with it being there for seven. That was why you're going to sit here and like contradict yourself on like, well, seven's like kind of ridiculous. But you just said you would take it for seven. Well, I would. That's me personally. I would. As long as it sounds, I would. Yeah, I literally made the content because it's relevant at the time. I'm not okay, going to go you, make content on like... The value of your of your content being devalued, and there's no reason for it. After literally the that point... Board, I don't think problem with that. Yeah, you're a better man than me. Every YouTube person that put content puts content out there is devalued the minute it's out there. Are you telling me your Iron Lords podcast from six months ago have the value that they that do right now? That is not an instructional guy. You can't make the app. The app. It's, it's time relevant content. What? Zer, Zer is null and void every single week. Nur, Zul, every Zer video is null and void All in four days. There is Zer videos to how to obtain exotics. Is we really doing this? Hybrid really just said the same really thing I did. Thing. My Tuesday weekly reset. My nightfall guides are not useful a week later. 
you comparing that to getting this for the world? It's the same principle. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not apples to apples. It's a not, nightfall. No, it's not. You want to know how much time I put into some of those nightfall guides? Probably about the same amount of time I put into that whisper. Okay. Okay, so that whisper you know had that. traction. You know, it's, it's, a, a, it's just a different monster. My YouTube, I know my YouTube. I know my YouTube content doesn't live forever. I'm fully aware. You if I, if my YouTube exactly. content lived forever, but my e, right, views you honest, honest, would like, forever go up. I, I, honestly, real talk. Do you honestly, in your heart, if your whisper video has the same exact value as your uh, in your heart, man, to a man? Come on. Right now, my Zer videos get more than my Whisper video. <laughs> Come on, you're not answering the question. To a man with the amount of he put in your Whisper, which is the No, great. those aren't the same, but that's not that's what not the comparison. And, and my Zer video, hold on, hold no, on, my Zer video does not live. My Zer video doesn't live forever, and my Whisper guide doesn't it's, live forever. You're not either. answering my question. That's not my question. The live forever is not my question. To a man, does that video of the Whisper hold more value to you than your serve video. Honestly. Well, of course it does. Thank you. Why does it? Well, it's my biggest video of all time. Thank you. That means But it's not going to live forever. It's not going to live forever. forever. Not, we're in agreement with that. I, I Are you? Friend. No, we're not. Because no, you're no, saying no, you no, want no, the exotics no, to live forever. I, I, I listen to what I'm I'm helping you. We're never going to get to the TWAB. <laughs> I'm help We're never going to get to it. I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to help you understand the mindset of a person who wants to keep the exotic, right? All I'm, I'm saying, literally is, saying is I don't want it to live forever and you do. attachment to that video. That's all I'm saying. I remember, I'm aware bro, I remember of... the you made to me when you made the video and you I saw know. what it did. That's all I'm saying. Yes, and that is a memory. That's not something that lives forever. I, that's not the argument, though. Are you sure? Yes, it is. But I'm just trying. <laughs> you're focused. I'm just trying to help you understand. You, you're trying to be now. You try to die on your back, and I respect that. But you know, in your heart, in your heart, what that video does. That's all the people that love exotics are saying. To you. That's all we're trying to say. In our heart, that's what those mean to us. That's and what we're saying. I am aware of that. But that video does not have a lifespan of seven years. That video has had has trickled along because a few people still go and look at it. But that video had a peak, it fell off, and it mostly was done. Now it has you're, like you're, dribbled you're along. You're a better man than me. You're a better man. You're a better man. You, you can you can move forward better What's up, than Zach? me. How you doing, man? <laughs> What's up, brother? You can do better than me in terms of letting those go. And I give you that. And all, all I'm saying is a, is a community who feel just like me. these are the reason in their minds they play Destiny for those moments. Destiny for a lot of people is a moment game. What? Where were you at when you did this? Who were you with when you did it? Yeah. That's what Destiny means to a lot of people, bro. I'm I got to understand. I am aware of that. I have saying. been in those moments. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That's all. Look, we, we get it. We, well, let's move on. Uh, we both said we gotta say, I get it. Yeah, we are gonna agree to disagree because yeah, this ain't ever happened. Yeah, we're never going to agree with that. But I, I just, well, I just well, let's move on. We got stuff. We got stuff. Yeah. Uh, to out Sanity's question, do I think the weapon stuff would have happened if Trials wasn't coming next season? Uh, into some of the people that I've talked to, it's been something that's been on the back burner for a while. Hold on. Our period. I get the last forever. It's not about forty. I said exotic. You can take the legendaries. I'm, I'm, I'm bending the on that. I, I don't like that either. But you're but just look, saying something still has to last forever. Is the hill you are technically dying on is like not everything, but something it's lasts the, forever. But Nothing small, lasts forever. Small percentage of the game. And all I'm saying is, if you take it, it's give me a new game. If you want it to last forever, go take a screenshot of that thing. Go put it as your wallpaper, that. just like a photograph in real life. Me. I'm not saying last forever. I'm saying do the new game. That's not forever. Y'all can't say that, oh, I don't ever want them to go. Take it away when you give me a new game. That's not forever. So please don't put the word forever with me. That's not what I'm saying. But, but if there is, but you will still live on that whole seven years. If Destiny lasted that long, technical like separation aside, you would still keep it in there that long. And that is a long ass time.
So. It's, it's clearly bothering you guys that are affecting the development of the, the smallest percentage of guns in the game is affecting the development of the game in your opinion. We disagree to disagree. Yeah. Anyway. I believe that horse is officially dead. Yes. All right. Um, if everybody's got to shake out their eyes and ears yeah, and you guys are deleting baby things photos. up. Kids are grown up already. Delete those pictures. <laughs> All right, I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. Anyway. <laughs> so we did actually get a 12. It was a late one because I guess they were looking over it for a while. It was posted like a couple hours ago, two or three, something like that. It was not posted four hours ago, so it was up, but it was late. It was like 7, 30, 8 o'clock my time. Mm. We have some subclass. I'm going to let you talk for a while because I feel like I'm just yeah, like. No, I'll, be, I'll, I'll warm a man out. Warm a man out. Warm a connection a little I bit. Just, so we got, yeah, we, 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 jump right yeah. into the beat. I feel like I need a shirt made for this yeah, argument or something. I, I done annoyed this man. <laughs> I don't I'm done. Enough. I'm done. No, po- no podcast next this week, guys. Good day. I got no, no podcast <laughs> next week. I gotta take a week off. Yo, e, this is the greatest. I can't, I can't talk to this man. <laughs> We're stopping. I'm, shut, I'm shutting it down. I'm shutting it down. Bobby. <laughs> All right, so let's get right. In. We're at two hours already. Holy. Yeah, God. we're two hours. We go fly. We go fly. This one. So Subclass changes. Well, I'm sorry. I get to sleep. You changes. don't. So. So, yeah, pretty much the dev team comes out and he says, hey, they got some comments message. They've been hard at work. And they want to talk about all the data scientists and things that they've been talking about with Crucible, Crucible for a minute, and so on and so forth. So we're going to just jump right into the right? So pretty much these are the things that they, they allocated their data. And they said, this is what we got to look at. So Warlocks, let's stand up, y'all, because y'all up on the dock. So Warlocks melee. The Warlocks have long been at a disadvantage in many fights takes them slightly longer the Titans and Hunters to recover from the nation's melee attack. So next season, we're extending the Warlock's basic melee range to a total of 5.5 meters. Warlocks will still slightly, be slight, melee will slightly be slower than other classes, so they'll now have the one meter advantage. If you use this window to land the first melee attack in a flat fight, you will emerge victorious. They feel this is a more interesting solution to melee disparity and then the homogenizing all of the melee attacks. Because we'll be studying the data as it rolls in to make sure it. Now, you want me to attack Titan Barricade or you want to talk about Warlock Melee? Go for it. Uh, I mean, Warlock Melee, you can talk about. Yeah. No, I, listen, I we've been at a disadvantage for a while. You know, um, I think it's a fair change. I, I kind of like this, per se. They didn't speed it up. They say we're going to extend it. Now, extending is an advantage. It is an yes, it is. It is an advantage. So, that is an advantage. If you I mean, get the not... first one, I don't think my guess is like if you get the first slap by a range, I don't think the time to get my second one off is going to beat you because he literally just said if you are at the range and you land it first, you're going to win the second one if we're punching right. it out. Right. So that, you literally just gave that. Warlocks an advantage. Now in D1, Warlocks, I believe, had this. Um, advantage already. They, that's why they were initially nerfed, because they had an extended play. And they're giving it back? <laughs> the difference is you guys still hit faster. So if we're at the same distance, right? Yeah, so if I get the up, jump on you, I'm going to win. But right. if you get so the range could, jump on me... Right. But if we, but we had the slower advantage, slower melee, from the, what are we supposed to do? Just stay with the slowest melee? That's, from, and, and that's how it's rocking? I would rather see this be equal on melees. I don't think melees need to be like different between classes. That much. I agree. I think what the issue really is, is and the fact that the warlock can the way it, the way it moves with a lot of their it's just the animation attack. speed. Yeah, I think the... this is a technical issue that they can't solve. Because let's be real, the honest answer you just said, right? Make all the melee speeds the same. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> that's true. logical, but it's like the animation speed must be too long or something. Yeah, it must be too much. So we'll see how it plays out. I'm not gonna get. Too Crazy yet? I do think for me, obviously, I've, I've been at a disadvantage. I prefer this, but I got to see how it plays out if it's fair. That's all I got to see. So we got next up. You want me to get Titan this? barricades? Yeah. So they yeah. said Titan barricade is incredibly powerful in trials, mostly due to the resurrection of your fallen teammates. Next season, we're creating counters to the barricade, which while also raising its health from 500 to 600 uh, hit points. Barricades will now take extra damage from special ammo weapons, anti-barrier weapons, and certain heavy weapons. This change makes barricades sturdier while giving opposing players 
options to use their special ammo to bring down barricades more quickly. Right. So the falling weapons do 30% extra to barricades, snipers, grenade launchers, linear fusions, machine guns, traces, and anti-barrier weapons. The following do 60% extra, fusions, and shotties. Ooh. You're going to want to pop a, pit, a barrier up if you want to go for a res, but if you're shooting them with peanuts, not going to really do that much. They're going to last even longer. But if you have right. the right weapon, you're going to be able to drop them faster. 60% right. damage on a fusion rifle, that thing is going to get melted. Yeah, that's going to get melted. If people are running fusion, those barriers are going to drop. And that's one of those things. Oh, I'm playing Titans. I might need to switch to a fusion rifle. So they're right. going to make you kind of have to adapt depending on the class. Right, and this to me is clearly a trial thing. Because the first thing that's going to happen is when trials start and your man go down, if you're Titan, you're putting that barricade up over to what you So they have to figure out a way to come back. Again, a lot of these balances, I told you, I told you what was going to happen. People are like, oh, the meta, the meta. They're going to change the meta. A lot of this is result of trial. Tell y'all right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the next one is one shot abilities. This is big. Yeah. Oh, this is big. Let me get it. You want me? Because I know this is big. <laughs> what? So introduction of the oh, oh no a... the big one is the handheld I know I know <laughs> I know which one it I, is I, I've griped about that one a lot so right so I can't finally can't... finally it's getting some <laughs> I am battle. not the only one handheld supernova is busted mm -hmm. you finish with mm -hmm. your now? Yeah, continue. <laughs> yeah you can go we're starting with hunters anyway so the throwing knife right. no doubt so yeah, they look like they've taken a class at it, shot a two of them, then the support factor. They looked at the hunter, obviously, with a one-hit kill. And they said, hey, we're going to warn you some changes in or paper, but we made a point to really change the overall feel. All right. Well, the Titans, we showed the class ability. We reduced the auto-targeting angle by 50%. That might sound like a lot, but acrobatic Titans who could previously auto-target to make an instant 90 degree turn. We've also adjusted the lunge distance to 5.5 meters for both targeted and untargeted lunges. Targeted lunges were previously 6 meters, while untargeted lunges were previously 4.5 meters. These changes make for a more consistent experience for lunge. For the hunter's blade at night, we reduced its tracking significantly and created Have new you seen what that thing can do? Yes, it's decent. And reduce tracking effects that make the knife more faithful to on the And then for the Warlocks, handheld Supernova is favorite. We've made a number of changes to bring this ability around with With part of the handheld Supernova strength lies in its pairing with old exotic And that's going to also be tool. So screw that into that. That's going to get some type of system. Our data indicated that each, that even without controversy, Handheld supernova needed to be here are the changes. Increased activation time by 0.6 seconds. Reduced hold time. You can't hold around for from one round to two point five. Reduced range by twenty percent. Tightened the horizontal spread of the boat by twenty five percent. Boat explosion now does self damage. Interesting. Reduce bolt explosion radius from 0.5 meters. You can meters. talk a little louder, by the way. Are you like trying to be quiet? Yeah, I'll be out. You know, I didn't know if you could. Uh, no, you're good. Yeah, you can talk a little louder. Yeah. All right, cool. In our place testing, we found that the product of these changes is an ability that is still incredibly strong, but now has a risk reward ratio commensurate power. After all, this thing can vaporize multiple <laughs> PvP opponents. <laughs> No kidding. Know. You don't say. You could wipe out a team sitting on a point with that damn thing, and it's one handheld Nova. The disgust. Then even after a... It's here's disgusting. A, or as it, Aztecross would say, it's nasty. It's nasty. The it's been nasty. Of, it's about to be a little less. This man is loving this turn. The tightening yes. of the bolts leads to more concentrated damage at range. This is the silver line. The tightening of the bolts leads to more concentrated damage at range. Improving its viability against heat. To compensate for this change, here's my part. Other elements of the middle void rack walker path are being buffed, including the Nova War Super, which now has a increased damage resistance, a longer duration, and a reduced blink cost. So let's get Warlocks, Titans, 
punches? Where are you at with all of this? Well, I feel like the shoulder charge already got some weird issues because, yeah, the auto-targeting going down, I already feel like it's low because I've straight up whiffed shoulder charges. Now, I know some people hate the 90-degree turn, and honestly, like, that's a fair change. Shouldn't be able to do that. I'm honestly hoping some of the targeting and untargeted, I just, I feel like if I'm, like, relatively near a person and I'm, like, looking at them and I've got the shoulder charge fairly lined up that I should actually hit because I've missed some that I feel like should. We'll that, see how that, it lands, that, honestly. I'm glad. This they deserve all the smoke. That's fine. All the smoke. Handheld One Supernova was worse. Handheld Supernova and was worse. That run around the map, no skill. At least I got to hold it and charge and have to kill. This joint, you just it run didn't and even look at take somebody. that long to hold. You could hold it for four seconds around a corner and then spray a cone, take out multiple people. You just run it. <laughs> Let me just run and bash into somebody and get an instant kill. <sighs> Anyway, yeah, but like, I can't down. get to you with your supernova. You melt me in before I get there. Yeah, but you can run indefinitely. I can't hold my supernova indefinitely. Well, that's a radar. You know when somebody's nearby. Which I have to get to you. Got it. Anyway, handheld supernova. <laughs> Reduced range. Look, okay, look how many changes were done to mine, and look at all the list of stuff that was done to yours. Yeah. Which one needed more of the tweaks? Um, I would say handheld the, the bullet, the fact bullet, that it can the bullet list says it all. It can multi kill. That I would give you that. It can multi kill from range, and you hold it, and you get damage resistance with controverse hold. Do I just need to keep talking? No, but you you can't act like it's not any skill involved with that compose to you running around the map like a psychopath and just meeting someone for an instant kill in death. That's not skill-based. Very minimal skill is required when that charge time is so fast. I have been running around that corner. They turn and, and they turn and super me. Supernova me. There is very little. They're like, oh, it's coming. Let me charge. Here he is, bam. I'm I at just... least have to go to you. You just sit there and wait. And... I still, can I hold it indefinitely? Can I wait? No, but you know if I'm getting... Can I charge my no Super Bowl? I never said you could, but you don't have to. You have but, range. Yes, you you have the, your charge time. Your charge time allows you to charge it and throw it while I'm running at you. And I can charge it indefinitely. So I can wait for the beginning. I can hold it as much no, as possible. No, you don't have that to. You have a range in front of you that it will fire. So it's like, oh, like, you're getting close. Charge up. He's in range fire. You, you, it goes away. You, there's a plan. I'm, o and I'm fully aware of how okay. it works. Okay, you do know this. So this make I, I'm, I have tried it, yes. Yeah. I'm fully aware yeah. of how I, it works. I, I feel you're the handheld supernova is yeah. broken, and it's going to hopefully be less, is all I'm saying. It's not all I'm saying. Don't act like there's no skill involved compared to your damn psychopath E. <laughs> do you know how many times, do you know how easy it is to shut me down? How? Oh. Play. Shotgun, fusion. Mm. Go, I have to get, I have to get melee range. I have to get melee range to you. Mm. I don't know what the range on yours, is, but they're reducing it by twenty percent, and it's still gonna hit from distance. I mm. have to get within melee range. If you die to my shoulder charge, either I get you in the back, which I could kill, deal you with a shotgun anyway. Mm. <laughs> or I'm running around a corner, and guess what? You shouldn't be around the corner any more than you should if you had a shotgun. You defended that. You are caping for that. That deep, but I'm gonna let this ride. Handheld supernova has been worse than shoulder charge. Had hundred percent. Yeah. Well, it needed to. It both needed. It See you, said Fred. Are happy. <laughs> Good night, said Fred. <laughs> Peace, <Be sure. laughs> He said, "I'm feeling the passion." That's cause cast as well. Even when we fight it. <laughs> But yes, they're getting tweaked, and your super is getting buffed, which is fitting because I feel like yes. that was a little weak. So that's good. Can I just All say right. real quick? Why in the hell? If it with this, it, it, it's funny about um the Nova War. It's going through so many dramatic. Oh, it's like roller coaster. Yeah, it's all up. They can't. That's they it. can't decide. It's too strong. It's too weak. It's too strong. It's too weak. What? What is it? We don't know. It's just fun. Look at that. Let's get on. <clears throat> all right. So, general subclass tuning. We made changes to a number of subclass paths in effort to tighten the gameplay balance. For example, Stormcaller Top, Striker Bottom, and Arc Strider Bottom have remained dominant in PvP for multiple seasons. And this is again where you have to wonder. It's been dominant for multiple seasons. 
So you guys know it's been di- dominant for multiple seasons, but didn't feel like touching it. I mean, guys, come on. We give them a good pass. We'll double pull your resource. Take seven years. Seven years. <laughs> Consistently beating out all other paths in both win rate and average efficiency. They actually talked early up. They talked about how much data they have about what players win. Like, is it perception versus reality? The number of wins, the time to kill, the number of weapons. Like, the data they have is insanity. Their data scientists have a lot to dig through. Um, these paths have also ranked them on the top among PvE paths in terms of kills per minute, which is weird. I don't picture... I know top tree, like Stormcaller, bottom tree striker. I could see some of those, but... I don't yeah. picture Art Striders being, like, broken in PvE. Yeah, I was surprised to see those with a dominant class. PvE, right? yeah. yeah. I'm like, I go hammers. I go... I don't picture those as killer in PvE, so yeah. weird. Probably. We've adjusted these paths and others to bring them closer to the middle of the pack. On the other end of the path spectrum, paths such as Voidwalker bottom, Nightstalker bottom, and Striker middle, because mm-hmm. the Striker missile, the flying human missile thing, nobody yeah. touches that thing. Yeah. In PvE, it's like, oh, cool, one shot. We've taken steps to lift them up. In the spirit of transparency, we take no joy in nerfing the abilities, weapons, and armor that we all love to use. Just remember this when you talk about our weapons. We wish to answer keeping the game balanced and fresh was always to buff the underpowered elements. But such an appro- but such an approach leads to power creep. And they talked about creep and weapons. Again, using their words. You took the, the slow slow and Yeah. The slow and steady increase of the average power of everything in the game, which trivializes the incredible game modes and encounters that the other teams at Bungie work to put together. After all, as Destiny players ourselves, we want to go home and play the game too, and we want the game to be as fun and healthy as possible. So that's most of it from them. Oh yeah, Hunter trip mines are sticky again. That's a good change. I always enjoyed those. I don't even play a Hunter. Those should have things have never been not sticky. <laughs> We've got some Twitch Prime awards. Link your Twitch account to Bungie account. Go to Amanda Holiday. She at least has something for you. Go get some cosmetics. If you didn't get Soros by two days ago, then you missed it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, they said upcoming resolved issues. They've got some stuff coming up for 10. Travel loading times will be returned ah, to oh normal. God. Just yeah. in time for you to be done turning in your fractal line, so it's not going <laughs> to matter. <laughs> Do that. But your loading time... Um, yeah, that's the big one. It, I don't know if you experienced it, E. It's been really bad. There was one time I actually left out food, did all bunch of stuff on PC, and I still didn't. What? I'm talking about the tower loading. I've been experiencing Oh, they're awful. Yeah. I finally, it's starting to hit me. I'm like, wow. Oh, yeah. They're, they've been really bad. They were really bad on um, Fractaline Night. I went to go load in. I think I went to go get... It was like console loading times. I may as well go get some food, make some dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a couple things. There's some a couple other patch notes and stuff, and there's a couple of videos. They said, it's been an eventful week. No kidding. And we've shared a lot, but we aren't done yet. All of this Trials of Cyrus talk may have some of you wondering if there's going to be PvE content coming next season. Luke mentioned we have more info coming and shared a cool picture of next season's artifact. So Luke Season's picture that he tweeted, which is kind of like the concept art, is like the Warmind Sword. Yes. That's apparently going to be our artifact, so that's kind of cool. Okay. okay. So Warmind Sword thing going through Anna Bray or Osiris or Rasputin. Either way, artifact is going to be coming through Mars would be a guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a 4K picture of it out there if you want it as well. There will be plenty of players to do who prefer to take on the Minions of the Darkness. Next week, we'll share more on what to expect in Season of the Worthy. Only one more TWAB left to go before the new season. And two more TWABs before Trials. So I wonder if next week they cover the seasonal stuff, and then Thursday they cover the details about Trials, how it's going to work, and stuff like that. You Mm -hmm. think they'll break it down that way? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think I also think they've alluded to more nerf. Because, again, your beloved handhold supernova is going to get more smoke. Because, uh, shout out to my boy, um, cool guy. He's a huge controversial old guy. He's the one that put me on to that. That all synergy with that, it, it has to get fixed. Because what's going to happen is, even with the nerves, they're going to try to work around it by using that exotic to get more grenade energy faster and stuff like that. So they've got to tweak that as well. Because overall, to be honest, every nerf I felt. You know what I'm saying? Hunt, I mean, um, Titans had to get it. Warlocks had to get it with that. I like the melee change. Fan, we'll see. 
Um, other than that, I want to see how they uh, the weaker moving um subclass. I like that they're fi- I mean they're finally telling us, hey, these are the top class. These are the ones that are stat thick. Because now it's without you. Now we got to buff those others. Let's get let's get that going on. Because again, trials is coming. We have to have a fair playing field that at least these other classes can compete somewhat. That's all. Yeah. No, I mean, I agree. I think the the subclass changes are good. They were needed. Some of these have been outstanding for a little while. There's mm-hmm. we got sandbox stuff changing. We've got subclasses changing. There's going to be a little bit more. I mean, things are definitely going to get a new coat of paint on. We'll see how Trials kind of irons out. They're trying to really make sure tr- Trials kind of lands. The fixes with Trials coming in, obviously, tr- uh, the power not going to be. If ba- f- that's huge. That was, like, the biggest thing all day. This could have been some stuff. That was, like, the biggest thing for... All of this week was Luke Smith's tweet saying artifact power won't matter. I was like, you just saved a whole bunch of stuff right there for a little while. So that was big. But yeah, this one has been a minute. We're at 220. It is also, we got to let this man get ready to go back to pack so he doesn't die. Mm -hmm. Um, You guys have been awesome tonight. I got to say chat has been crazy. This Mm -hmm. has been a passionate one this evening (laughs) for sure. I didn't think it was going to be (laughs) <laughs> no, I, th- I thought we did it last week, honestly. I didn't think we were going to go at it again. I really didn't. But it is a fun one either way. By the way, it's nothing but love between us guys. We may differ on things, but yeah, there's nothing but yeah, there's nothing but good times going in here. We just, we exactly brothers kick the crap out of each other sometimes too. I know my brother and I did. <laughs> Chris Buster, thanks for the entertainment. <laughs> Day Look, I, I didn't, you know what, buddy? This one was completely unplanned. Like, I thought we were going one on the bridge. I was going to accept it. And then you got <laughs> I had to poke the bear because it's a hell of a lot of oh, then when I get going, it's all... <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, this has been bonus episode. It's number 92, which throws off my timing of episode 100. So bonus. we'll see how we name these things. But, um,. For the time being, you guys are awesome. If you guys listen to this on audio, you can find both of us. Um, I'll let you do your outro real quick. Sorry. No, it's sure, just man, late. Listen. I'm like, no, no. I feel like the first one chat was amazing. The fact that you guys hit us up, loved last episode so much. You guys are tweeting both of us when the news was out, poking the bear on both sides. It was absolutely hilarious. And it really means because I don't know how much. You know what I'm saying? We both want the best thing for this game. And to see you guys say, yo, I can't wait for last word. But that, like, that to me yeah, makes yeah. me really appreciate that you guys appreciate what we're doing. So that's number one. So shout out to you guys, Dakota, Hybrid, everybody, even the people that just <laughs> all y'all too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all love. He's, old. He's got Luke Smith on that phone right now. Everything is going according to plan. The evil exotics, the evil legendaries will fight the way. It's only a matter of time. He's going to get his way. But I got to fight. I got to fight for those the people with heart that love these things. The hoarders, as you call me. <laughs> the seven-year guy. <laughs> yeah, that might be your new title. That's All right, guys. Too. So, yeah. Uh, I'll tell, yeah, I'll tell yeah, you. Make, it, make it fast. <laughs> Iron Law Podcast. We're still at PAX. We're going to get a ton of time to do amazing things. Just keep looking at the channel. And again, Lords of Gaming. Tremendous articles. You see the site. We're out here repping packs in Boston. Be back at the end of the week. And then next week, right back in tune with my man, E for the last word. The best. Don't call us the best Destiny podcast you never. A lot of people hear us here. When they hear us, they're going to understand what's But again, it's all fun. It's all games. Guys, my brother, we love each other. We love this game. And it's great to see you guys support us the way you do. It really feels good. And that's why I like to stay up late and argue with them. It's got me crazy. <laughs> but yeah, you guys know where to find me as well. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Follow me. See what I'm playing. It's Ebontis everywhere. If you find the cheetah, you probably tripped over my stuff. Uh, if you guys do enjoy the videos, make sure you guys like them on both channels. Subscribe to both Iron Lord's podcast and mine. The audio will be up later as well. So always make sure you guys definitely check into that one. Uh, the audio goes up so you guys can take it with you on the go. Always a nice way to do it. Uh, but overall, thank you guys very much. This has been episode 92, February 28th. February is almost done, but we got an extra day this year. So thank you guys very much. And as again, this has been The Last Word. <laughs>